The story starts with Toya Mochizaki. He died in an accident caused by God. God apologized to Toya for throwing lightning to the earth and accidentally killing him. Toya couldn't believe that he died at the age of 15, but he took the bad news very calmly. He asked the God what is going to happen to him now. God offered Toya to be reborn again in another world. Toya immediately agreed to his reincarnation, and God wanted to grant him one wish as compensation. Toya then asked if he could take his phone to the other world, but realized that he can't charge it. So God allowed him and Toya learned that in the other world, he can charge his phone with magic. Toya was happy to take his phone, but he thought that his phone is useless. So God explained that he can use anything like in his old life, except calling people in his old world. After that, Toya was sent to another world, and he immediately received a call from God. God wanted to let him know that he could use Google Maps in the new world, and everything was adjusted. So Toya was able to find the nearest town with his phone, and he realized that he didn't have any money to buy food and drinks, as he was thinking about how to get money. Suddenly a carriage appeared in front of him. The carriage stopped, and a man who found Toya's clothes interesting got out. He wanted to buy the clothes from Toya. Toya was then allowed to ride into town with him in the carriage, and he found out that the man had his own fashion shop. Toya got new clothes, and the fashion retailer also wanted to buy Toya's Gucci underwear. Toya got a lot of gold coins for his Gucci school suit, and he asked the fashion retailer if he knew a good inn. The merchant recommended the Silver Moon Inn, and Toya used his Google Maps to make his way there. Suddenly Toya heard voices, that someone is in trouble. Followed we see two girls being threatened. The guys wanted to scam the twins. Toya wanted to help the two girls. Suddenly he destroyed the item and the guys got angry. They attacked Toya, but he got the power of Riz. So he couldn't lose and Toya defeated the criminals easily. Then Toya paid the two girls with a gold coin for the broken item. They were very grateful, and Toya learned that the two girls' names are Elsa and Lindsay. Toya introduced himself too, and the girls thought he was from another place called Ishin. Toya found out that the two girls are also living in the Silver Moon Inn, and they showed him the way to the inn. When they arrived at the inn, the innkeeper Micah teased her friend Elsa and asked her if they too got a boyfriend. Elsa blushed. Then Toya learned from Elsa that the two twins had an order to transport the item and the guys tried to scam them. Lindsay said that she was against the idea of taking such a dubious job from the start, and Elsa said that next time they'd better take jobs from the guild. Toya overheard their conversation about the guild and asked if he could accompany them when they went to the guild. The two twins agreed to show Toya the way to the guild house and he thanked them. During the night he looked at what was happening in his old world, after that he went to sleep. The next day, Toya accompanied the girls to the guild, and he couldn't read the New World's writing at all. So he looked at the two girls, and they wanted to know if he had already decided for a job. Toya confessed that he can't read at all, which surprised the two girls. Lindsay then reads an assignment, and the two girls offered Toya to do an assignment with them. So they decided to carry out an order together, and Toya needs some equipment. Toya then bought a sword, and he also signed up as an adventurer. After that, Toya and the twins fought against strong wolves. Toya saw fire magic for the first time and was amazed by Lindsay. Toya and his friends managed to complete their first assignment with ease. They were only supposed to defeat five unicorn wolves and they brought six horns to the guild. Toya wanted to keep one of the horns as a souvenir for his first job. Then their guild card was stamped with magic and they got their reward. Later they had tea together and Toya asked Elsa and Lindsay if they could teach him to read and write. Elsa suggested her sister Lindsay to Toya, and she blushed. Also, Toya asked if they could still teach him magic. Lindsay then explained that people without affinity cannot cast spells. Toya didn't understand everything, but he was sure that he had received a high affinity from God. Toya asked if they have a way to find out about the affinity for magic, so he was shown magic crystal with which one can strengthen magical energy. Lens then showed him how to use the magic stones and created water. Then Elsa explained that she has no water affinity, and therefore could not use water magic. She also explained that everyone has a different affinity, and Toya wanted to test his own affinity. He used a magic crystal, and a large amount of water appeared. Toya wanted to see if he had any other affinities, and they went outside. Toya tested all magic stones, and all magic stones he used reacted to him. Mastering all elements, Toya learned that Lindsay was mastering only three elements, and there has never been anyone who had six affinities. Then Toya discovered another magic stone and learned about null magic. Toya learned that null magics are unique magics, like body enhancement magics from Elsie. Null magic is also called personal magic because not everyone can learn it. 
Then Toya tested it, to see if he could use null magic. So he said the words gate, and Toya created a portal. They then noted that Toya can use gate to create a portal to a place he's visited before. So they found out that Toya has all seven affinities, and Toya was surprised that God made him overpowered. Then Micah showed up, and introduced them to Isle, who was looking for a new dish for her cafe. They asked if Toya and his friends had any ideas. The twins had no idea and asked Toya for his advice. Toya learned that she would like to make a dessert, and her target audience are all women. He then told them about ice cream, and they didn't know the delicious dish, which Toya called. Toya then used his phone and the two girls were curious. Toya said that it is a device only he can use and he sought out the ingredients for ice cream. Then they got all the ingredients that they need to make delicious ice cream. Followed they used ice magic and made successful ice cream. When they tasted the ice cream, everyone was surprised by the delicious taste. They loved Toya's dessert, and Ale thanked Toya for showing her to make the delicious ice cream. In the morning, Toya started an assignment, and he took a picture of Elsa sleeping. Also his group were going to deliver a letter to the capital. Toya then asked the twins why they didn't take the quest to fight against a mega slime. The two twins said they hated slimes. Toya learned that slime monsters could decompose women's clothing and he visualized it, how it would be look like. After that, Toya's group wanted to eat lunch. Suddenly they spotted a samurai girl fighting many criminals. She could use strong fighting techniques, but the girl was too hungry to fight. Toya supported the samurai girl, and he and his friends defeated all the criminals. Before they got into trouble, they ran to a small alley and took the girl with them. Toya learned that the rescued girl's name is Yahe, and she is from the country of Ishin. Then Yahe's stomach growled and she lost all her money to the criminals. Toya and his friends invited the samurai girl to lunch. She said that she is on a training trip and her next destination is the king's capital. Toya's group also planned to travel to the capital, so Elsa asked if she would like to travel to the capital together. They then drove to the capital together in a carriage, and Elsa was happy that Yahe was there too. Meanwhile, Toya learned more about null magic, and he learned that most null magic are useless because they were created by amateurs. Then Toya discovered a spell to draw distant objects into his hands. So Toya tested the new spell, and he managed to get Yahi's hairband on his hand. Lindsay noted that it's a useful spell, but he could have done nasty things with it too, like pickpocketing. Elsa and Lindsay said that Toya aren't allowed to commit crimes with his spell, so he said that he could also use his newfound magic to steal girls' panties. The two twins got scared at the thought, and Toya said it was just a joke. After that, he tested another spell that expands his senses. As a result, Toya could smell something suspicious far away. Toya smelled blood, and they discovered that people were being attacked by evil monsters. Toya and his friends immediately fought the monsters, and Yahe tripped over a rock. A monster appeared, and Toya used a spell to save Yahe. Then more monsters appeared, and Toya admired how the girls fought the monsters. Suddenly, a monster tried to sneakily attack Toya, and he was rescued by Lindsay. More and more monsters appeared, and a magician summons more lizard monsters. This is how the summoner was discovered by Toya, and he used his spell named Slip to incapacitate the summoner. Toya and his friends managed to defeat the enemies. Suddenly a little girl called for help because her servant was injured deadly. Lindsay couldn't heal the man because an arrow was stuck in his chest. So Toya used his null magic and was able to remove the arrow. Also, Toya healed the servant named Lime. Afterwards, Lime thanked them, and Toya's group learned that the little girl is the duke's daughter, and her name is Sushi. So Elsa and the others bowed, and Toya learned that Sushi belonged to the royal family. Sushi said that she is the majesty's niece, and also they don't have to talk so politely with her. Toya and his friends found out that they were attacked by bandits on the way to the capital. Then Lime wanted to hire Toya's group as an escort, and also reward them after they arrival in the capital. So Toya escorted Sushi to her estate in the capital of the kingdom. Sushi's father was happy that his daughter was unharmed and thanked Toya for saving Sushi. Then Toya learned from Duke Alfred that his wife fell ill five years ago and she went blind as a result. Also, the Duke said that Sushi was on a journey to find a magician who could cure his wife's illness. Unfortunately, they didn't find a person who can use the appropriate null magic. Suddenly, the friends of Toya realized that Toya could cure the illness of Sushi's mother. So Toya copied a zero magic that cured any disease. After that, Ellen was able to see her family again, and was cured of her illness. Toya's friends were also happy that Toya's healing spell was working. As a result, the Duke wanted to give the adventurer Toya a reward. He received 40 platinum coins, and when he realized how much money he got, he shocked at the amount of money. In addition, 
Albert gifted Toya and his friends four coins with the symbol of the royal family too. So Toya ended his assignment in the capital, and Yahe wanted to continue traveling with Toya. In the days that followed, Toya discovered a crying girl. She told him that she was separate from her friends. Toya showed her his phone, and he used Google Maps to find Arma's big sister. So Toya did a good deed, and Arma's big sister thanked him for helping her little sister. After that, Toya's group then split up to buy supplies for their onward journey. Toya was late, and he bought a new coat. As a result, the girl said he looks good in his new clothes, which made him blush. The next day two men were playing shogi. Toya created a shogi board a few days before, and the two men at the inn were addicted to the game. Then Toya was asked to produce another shogi board. After that, Elsa and Yahe showed up with a big bag full of desserts. They had bought far too many desserts. So Toya teleported himself to the duke's mansion with the magic gate spell, and he gifted the duke with some desserts. The duke's family loved Toya's gift. Also Toya showed Duke Albert the game of shogi. Sushi was angry because she wanted to play too, but her father said her turn will come later. Sushi got angry because she is bored and she complained to Toya. In addition, she teased Toya and she tickled him. Then Toya played shogi with the duke until late at night, because Albert also became addicted to the game shogi. The next day, Toya showed the quest about the mega slimes, and the girls refused immediately. They said they hate slimy and sticky things. Meanwhile Toya imagined the slimes disappearing the girls' clothes. Then we see Toya's group in a ruin fighting a dark knight. Yahe and Elsa's teamwork was perfect, and they managed to overpower the dark knight. The dark knight then attempted a sneak attack, but Lindsay froze the dark knight's legs. In the end, Toya attacked, and they defeated the dark knight together as a team. After defeating the monster, Toya used his searched spell, and he could sense a historical treasure under a huge rock. Followed Lindsay used an explosion spell, and destroyed the huge rocks around the area. Then they found an underground entrance that led to a cave. Elsie and Yahe were afraid of ghosts, and they hid behind Toya. As they walked on, they saw ancient writing, and Toya decided to take a picture with his phone. Toya unwittingly startles the two girls, and he says it was just his phone. Then he photographed the stone wall, and Elsa discovered an earth magic stone. Toya wanted to perform magic in the stone, and the girls made a big safe distance from Toya. As the earth magic stone absorbed magic, a secret door opened to a mysterious statue. Toya looked at the statue and noticed that the statue was made of glass. Suddenly, Lindsay's light magic faded. Toya's friends noticed Lindsay's magic being absorbed. Then the glass stature awoke, and he transformed into a crystal bug. The cave collapsed, and Toya used a portal to escape with his friends. After that, the monster made an explosion, and he tried to hunt Toya and his friends. So Lindsay attacked with fire magic, and the magic was absorbed by the monster. Yahe then attacked with her sword, and the shell was too hard. As the next one, Elsa also tried to destroy the monster's skin, but they had no chance. The girls didn't know what to do anymore, and Toya used a spell to throw the monster away. The monster was then attacked with ice magic, and the twins attacked together. As a result, Elsa managed to destroy the legs of the monster, and suddenly it started to glow. The monster regenerated himself, and immediately injured Elsa. Elsa was badly injured, and Toya instantly healed Elsa while the monster was distracted by Lince and Yahe. After that, Toya thought of a plan to defeat the monster. He then told Elsa about his plan, and he faced the monster. Then Toya stole the crystal from the monster with a spell, and Elsa was able to destroy the monster's core with a single punch. Toya was able to defeat the strong monster with his friends, and they wanted to report the story to the duke. After that, Albert learned about the mysterious monsters of the kingdom ruins. He couldn't believe everything, and Toya also showed him pictures of the writings in the ruins. In the evening they returned to the Silver Moon Inn, and Toya used drawing magic to produce copies of his photos. The next day, he teleports back to Duke Albert's estate. Suddenly, Toya learned that the king had been poisoned, and Albert asked Toya to cure the illness of his brother. Toya was on the way to the king's palace with Duke Albert, and he learned that the king was most likely poisoned by nobles who wished to marry the princess to become the next monarch of the kingdom. Albert wanted Toya to use his spell recovery to heal the king and save his life. When Toya and Albert arrived at his brother's castle, they were told by an arrogant noble that the assassin had been caught. Then the king's daughter cried, and Albert opened the door to the king's bedroom. Toya then used his recovery spell on the king. Toya was able to save the king's life, and Albert introduced Toya to his brother. The king thanked him for his help, and the king's daughter Yumina immediately fell in love with Toya.
but Toya was into older women, and he got nervous around the pretty Charlotte. Charlotte is a court mage to the king, and she wanted to learn more about magic from Toya. Then Yumina thanked Toya, and she noticed that Toya reacted differently to her than to Charlotte. After that, Albert and his brother wanted to find out who had poisoned him. General Leon said the king passed out after drinking wine during lunch. Toya had a hunch as to how the king was poisoned. The king then wanted to speak to the ambassador. When Ambassador Olga appeared, Toya immediately noticed that they knew each other. Toya suspected that Olga wasn't the assassin who poisoned the king. So Toya wanted to see the crime scene, and he used his search spell to find the poison. Followed Toya knew immediately how the king was poisoned, and he had also called the suspect to him. So everyone gathered at the crime scene, and Count Balsa was called. He couldn't believe the king was still alive. However, Toya said that the culprit is among the person in the room. Count Balsa tried to blame Olga for the poisoning, and he said that Olga's wine was poisoned. Toya then showed a new bottle of wine. General Leon drank it, and he confirmed that there was no poison in the wine. Then Toya poured the wine into his majesty's glass, and he asked Count Balsa to drink it. He refused to drink the wine, and Leon forced him to drink from the glass. As Count Balsa drank the wine, he thought he was dying. Toya was able to prove that the poison was in the glass. Count Balsa was the culprit, and Toya prevented Count Balsa from running away. Then the king thanked Toya again, and Yumina suddenly stood up. She told her parents that she had decided to marry Toya. Toya couldn't believe it, and didn't know what was going on. Toya said that he can't get married yet, and that he family didn't know him. The king said that Yumina had magical eyes, and could see the true character of each person. Then Toya learned that Yumina is only twelve. Toya said that he and Yumina are way too young to get married. The king said that the king's family usually get married by the age of 15. Toya said that in his country, marriage is only allowed from the age of 18 at the earliest. Toya had no more arguments to present, so Toya was engaged to the king's daughter Yumina. Later, God calls Toya on his phone. God congratulated him on his engagement with the princess. The next day, the other girls found out about Toya's engagement to the princess. Everyone was jealous, and Yumina introduced herself to the girls. They also learned that Yumina would like to go on adventures with Toya in the future. Later on, Toya and his girls were on their way to an assignment. Yumina wanted to show Toya that she isn't useless, and she summoned powerful wolves. Toya was impressed by the summoning magic, and the wolves attracted monsters. Then Yumina shot a monster with her bow, and the others also started fighting. Toya and his girls fought the strong monsters, and they easily defeated the monsters. In the process, Toya and the other girls learned that Yumina is very strong and talented. After their fight, Toya was worried since his group is made up of only girls. He said he's afraid people will talk bad about him because he only has pretty girls in his group. The girls blushed when they heard Toya call them pretty. After that, they returned to the city, and Toya used summoning magic. Toya summoned a white tiger, and Yumina said that the white monarch is among the highest-ranking monsters. In order for Toya to make a pact with the white tiger, Toya had to prove his strength. He then showed the white monarch his magic powers. Toya had too much power, and the white tiger fell over, so the white monarch accepted Toya as his ruler. Then Toya gave the tiger the name Kohaku. Toya said that his form as a giant white tiger causes him problems with other people in the town. As a result, Kohaku turned into a cute little kitten. The girls loved Kohaku and everyone wanted to hug Kohaku. In the days that followed, Toya and his friends were assigned to investigate a castle that houses many slimes. The girls were all depressed because they hate sticky slimes. Toya looked forward to the assignment, as he would like to see if the slimes decomposed the girls' clothes. Then we see Toya. They were looking around the castle and they were looking for valuable research information of a slime explorer. When they looked in the basement, they found green slimes. Lindsay wanted to burn the slimes, but Toya stopped her, because she would destroy the whole castle with his fire magic. Following this, the slimes approached, and Toya noticed that the slimes are bound to certain places. When Toya and his friends wanted to go upstairs, more slimes appeared. Toya learned that the white slimes produce lotion, and the produced lotion of the slimes are harmless. Then the girls and Toya slide down the stairs through the lotion. Kohaku held Toya and saved him. The girls were all below and being attacked by the green slimes. The slimes decomposed the girls' clothes. Toya rescued his friends and used this spell gate to teleport them. Then Toya saw the half-naked girls and he stared at the girls. Toya enjoyed his view of the girls who were almost naked. So Toya blushed, and he was slapped by Elsa when she realized that Toya was staring at them. After that, they continued to look around the castle and they discovered strange statues. 
Then Toya looked at the statue, and he spotted bust slimes. They attached to women's chest and mimicked them. Following this, the slimes jumped onto Yumina, and she instantly defeated the slimes. After that, Toya found a secret room of the slime explorer. He discovered a book from the dead slime slime explorer, who lived in the castle. Toya was reading his diary, and the slime explorer wrote that he made his dream true with the slimes. Then slimes appeared, and Yumina told Toya that the slimes were transforming into something. The slimes turned into Toya's friends and were naked. Toya was looking at the naked bodies, and the girls tried to cover his view of the slimes. In the end, the girls burned down the castle and destroyed everything. So Toya was teaching how the castle was burned down, and he thought, it is funny that the slime researcher wanted to use his slimes to create a harem full of girls. The next day, Toya is seen walking around town with Kohaku. They saw that Yahe had found a lost little child. The girl just cried and she didn't want to tell Yahe her name, so Kohaku tried to reveal the girl's name. Kohaku learned that the little girl's name was Lin, and Toya couldn't locate the girl's mother in his search field. Then Toya tried to expand his search field with his phone. He found Lin's mother with his phone. As a result, Toya was able to help the girl find her mother. When the girl was reunite with her mother, Yahi wanted to know how he could find the mother with his phone. Yahi learned that by using the search spell and combining it with his cell phone, Toya can find anyone if he knows their name and appearance. Later, Toya is seen in his room combining a spell with his phone. Toya could see through the wall with his phone and watched Lindsay, who was in her underwears. He couldn't believe that he could see Lindsay's panties and he took screenshots of her. When Lindsay was dressed, she sought out Toya. Toya got scared and she told Toya that she wanted to learn new spells. Unfortunately, the spells were written in an ancient writing that she couldn't read. Toya created glasses that automatically translate ancient writing. Lindsay immediately wanted to learn the new spell and asked Toya to help her with it. Lindsay failed to cast the new spell and fell over from exhaustion. Toya then creates a spell, because he was worried about Lindsay. When she ran out of magic, Toya transferred some of his magic power to her body. Lindsay thanked Toya and continued to learn the new spell. Unfortunately it failed again, and Toya gave her some advice to learn her new spell. Toya explained her methods of learning new spells. Then Lindsay tried to follow Toya's advice, and she managed to learn the bubble bomb spell. Lindsay managed to cast a new spell and thanked Toya for the great help. In the days that followed, Toya was walking in the town and he saw Elsa admiring a dress. Toya talked with her and she thought the dress wouldn't suit her. Toya said she would look really pretty in the dress and he persuaded her to try the dress on. They went to the store together and Toya bought the dress and gave it to Elsa as a present. When Elsa told the other girls that Toya gifted her a dress, the other girls all wanted that Toya buy them a dress too. Then they received a letter, and Toya learned that he will be get a title of nobility. Toya wanted to refuse, but it would cause a big trouble, and he was forced to accept his title of nobility. The next day Toya looked at his new estate. He couldn't believe he got a huge estate instead of the knighthood. Toya was glad that he didn't become a noble, and instead had a new home for all his friends. Toya said that living in a house with five people is a lot of work. The girls were surprised that Toya wanted to share the huge mansion with them. They thought that Toya planned to stay in his new house only with Yumina because it was a gift from her father the king. The girls didn't want to be rude, so Toya said that he loves all four of them equally and they are all like family to him. The girls blushed when Toya said he loved them all and suddenly everyone wanted to look around the mansion. Toya didn't notice that all the girls had a crush on him. Yumina understood why the girls were all nervous and said that she likes to share Toya with the other girls. After that, we see Toya playing with Kohaku in his new garden. Then the girls showed up, and the girls asked if he really is sure to live with them in the huge mansion. Toya replied that he would like to live with them. In addition, Toya had to promise the girls to treat everyone equally, and not to favor anyone. Later, servants showed up to take care of and clean Toya's huge mansion. The butler Lime introduced Toya to the new servants, and Toya learned that Lime was the king's former butler. He was happy to serve his brother's savior. Toya learned that he is the older brother of Sushi's butler, also known as Lime. Toya remembered him immediately, and he had no objection to hiring the nice people as servants. Toya was then informed that Duke Albert and Sushi had come to visit. Sushi said that she was surprised when she heard about Yumina and Toya's engagement. Then Duke Albert said he was also considering Toya marrying his daughter, and Sushi wouldn't reject the idea to marry Toya as well. Toya managed to avoid the subject, and the Duke told him about his request. He wanted to ask for Toya's help 
because there should be an alliance between the Kingdom of Belfast and the Kingdom of Miss Mead. Toya should use his gate to safely teleport the kings from one place to another. The next day, Toya made his way to the Kingdom of Miss Mead. Toya met a group of knights who escort Toya and his friends on their journey. Toya thanked Olga for her support, and Almar was also happy to travel with Toya. After that, they discussed the route to the Miss Mead Kingdom, and Knight Leon had a crush on Olga. When it got dark, Toya and his group rested around the campfire. Suddenly, a comrade noticed that bandits are nearby. So Toya showed his phone, and he was able to track the bandits' locations using his Snapchat app. Toya tested a new spell, and he was able to attack all bandits with his phone. The bandits were all paralyzed by Toya, so the knights were able to arrest all of the bandits. Then Toya noticed that Leon had a crush on Olger. The other girls also watched, and they discussed whether Olger noticed Leon's feelings. Also, they said that Olger doesn't seem as dense as a certain someone. Toya didn't understand that the girls was talking about him. When they got to the next town, Toya spotted Leon, who was looking for jewelry. Leon said he wanted to buy a present for his mother. Toya knew it was meant to be a present for Olger. Toya then bought Arma a gift, and he asked her what her big sister Olger had chosen. As a result, Leon found out that Olger likes flowers. Following this, Toya walked away from the booth, and they were able to help Leon find a perfect present for Olger. Yumina praised Toya for helping Leon choose a gift for Olger. After that they sailed to another city, and Lindsay got seasick. So Toya gave Lindsay a piggyback, and Lindsay enjoyed the piggyback. As they were about to continue, Kohaku sensed someone is watching Toya's group. Then they drove on, and Toya suggested to set up a camp before the night fell. Olger said that there are many monsters in the woods, and Toya said that Kohaku can protect everyone. When the night fell on, a dragon suddenly appeared. Toya learned that the dragons are behaving strangely, and that they live in the center of the kingdom of Belfast. Toya looked at his phone, and he noticed that the dragon was flying towards a small village. So Toya's group split up to evacuate the villagers, and Toya attacked the dragon. Toya used Kohaku to lure the dragon away from the city. The dragon followed Toya, and he managed to lure the dragon to a deserted place. Then Kohaku got angry, because the dragon threatened Toya, and Toya was surprised that Kohaku could understand the dragon's language. Next, Toya wanted to knock down the dragon so Lindsay could sever the wings. Toya used a powerful attack and shot the dragon down from the sky. The dragon fell, and Lindsay cut off the dragon's wings. Suddenly, the dragon attacked with his fire breath, and Toya protected Lindsay. Then the other girls attacked the dragon too. The dragon had a very strong skin, and Toya's sword also broke. Suddenly, the dragon was injured by an unknown throwing knife. The dragon couldn't see anymore, and Toya made him stumble. After that, Toya's group prepared to defeat the dragon together. They surrounded the dragon and combined powerful spells. Toya was able to defeat the dragon with his friend's combined attacks. So Toya won against the evil dragon, and suddenly another dragon appeared. He was able to speak the human language. The dragon apologized to Toya for causing trouble for his comrade. Toya said he shouldn't cause any more problems in the future. They then put out the fire in the village and cared for the wounded until the next morning. In the afternoon, Leon and Commander Garen were amazed by Toya's good nature. Toya donated all the materials of the dragon to the villager, so they can recover their village with the money. The mayor of the village thanked Toya and wanted Toya to get the dragon's tooth. Toya learned that he can use the tooth to create a powerful weapon. In addition, the mayor gave him back a throwing knife, thinking it belonged to Toya. Toya didn't recognize the knife. Afterwards, in the carriage, Toya asked Kohaku if there were other people in the near of the dragon. Kohaku said that two people were hiding in the trees. However, they arrived at the capital of Miss Mead. Then they met King Jamuka. The king heard about their group and their good deeds. Following Yumina introduced herself as the daughter of King Tristwin of Kingdom Belfast. Yumina said that she wanted to personally deliver a message from her father for requesting an alliance with the Miss Mead Kingdom. However, King Jamuka got the letter and was thinking about it. Then King Jamuka got curious about Toya and asked if Toya would like to fight against him. Toya then learned that King Jamuka is a battle junkie. The king's servant said that Toya should fight the king with his full strength and show no consideration to him. Then the rules were explained that magic is allowed, but strong attack spells are not tolerated. Toya then used his spell slip, and the king lost instantly. The king was surprised by Toya's magic. He didn't want to accept defeat without a fight. So Toya had to fight King Jamuka again, and he wasn't allowed to use the spell slip. Then the two fight against each other, and King Jamuka was very talented in hand-to-hand -hand combat. 
followed Toya attacked, and he buffed his strengths. The king dodged his attack. The king also mastered null magic, and he could use the Axel spell to increase his agility. Toya loved his Axel spell and tried using it too. Toya managed to copy the magic perfectly, so both fought with the Axel spell. Toya combined the boost spell with Axel, and he managed to defeat the king. As a result Toya was proclaimed the victor, and the king was surprised and pleased with Toya. In the evening, Knight Leon was looking for his crush Olger, but unfortunately Toya hasn't seen her yet. Then Toya and Leon spotted the girls, and they were all dressed up nicely. The king then discovered Toya and complimented him on his outfit. Toya's girls also complimented him, and he was flattered. Then he wanted to take a picture of the pretty girls. After that, Toya told the king about his phone with which he can take photos. The king was amazed, and he wanted a picture of himself too. Toya left the party, and he discovered a mysterious teddy bear. Toya followed the teddy bear and was led to his mistress. Toya met the leader of the fairy folk named Lean. She knew about him as a dragon slayer. Toya learned that she is over 600 years old and was shocked. Then Toya inquired about her teddy bear Paula, and Toya learned that she is a regular teddy bear who can move through null magic. Followed then, Lean showed her null magic program, which allowed her to make things move in a certain way. She inserted her magic into a chair, and the chair could move by himself. Then Toya learned that her spell can't move everything and isn't so powerful. As a result, Toya wanted to copy her spell, and he immediately applied the program. Toya could immediately mimic Lean's magic, and she was surprised. Lean couldn't believe Toya was so talented. When Lean learned that Toya is a genius, she wanted to make Toya to her student. Toya refused and ran to his bedroom. The next morning, Toya met Lindsay and Yumina, he asking his girls to help him create weapons. So Toya opened a portal to the forest, and Elsa used her magic to cut the dragon's tooth. Then Toya shaped the dragon's tooth into a pistol. He also produced ammunition, and used the magic program to make the bullets recharge themselves automatically. Then he tested his new pistol, which was very powerful, and it worked perfectly without any problems. The two girls were fascinated by Toya's gun, and they also wanted a gun like Toya's. So he made more pistols for Elsa and Yumina. The two were happy, and Toya added another spell to his weapon. Followed Toya could also transform his pistol into a sword. After Toya made his new weapon, he and the two girls went into town to have dinner. Suddenly, Kohaku felt strangers watching them. Toya wanted to greet the two strangers, so he appeared behind the two suspects. The suspects tried to escape from Toya, but Toya tracked them down with his Google Maps and shot them with rubber bullets. Then they were tied up, and Toya wanted to search them for weapons. He grabbed a woman's breasts. Then he recognized the two suspicious people. Toya learned that his maids are spies from the Kingdom of Belfast, tasked with protecting Yumina. So Toya found out that the two of them only intended to protect Toya's group all the time, and he gave his maids their knife back. After that, the two maids demanded that Toya need to keep their mission as a secret. Then Elsa and Yumina are seen eating curry, and they were overwhelmed by the spice. Toya also tried the curry, and he was also defeated by the curry's spiciness. In the days that followed, the alliance between the two kingdoms was sealed, and Toya returned to the kingdom of Belfast. After Toya returned to his mansion, he was greeted by everyone and the maids thanked Toya for secretly sending the two home first. After that, Toya went to his room with Kohaku, and he wanted to rest, and he was reading some Instagram memes on his phone. Then Toya and Kohaku fell asleep. When Toya woke up after a nap, he wanted to take a bath. The bathroom wasn't locked, and he saw his girls in their underwear. Toya had to apologize to the girls, but he enjoys the sight of his girl's body, while being scolded by them. The following day, Toya made bicycle tires, and Duke Albert came to visit Toya. Duke Albert got curious, and Toya told him that he is currently making bicycles. However, Duke Albert was allowed to ride Toya's created bicycle. He immediately fell down and desperately wanted to learn to ride a bicycle. The girls were also interested in Toya's created bicycle. Else remarked that riding a bike is difficult. Toya taught the girls to ride bicycles, but Yumina could drive it with ease, and she was praised by Toya. The other girls were jealous and competed with each other. Yahe also wanted to ride, but Elsa didn't want to lose to her sister, so she didn't share the bike with Yahe. When the two twins competed against each other, Duke Albert showed up, claiming that he is the best bike rider. The two twins were distracted and bump into each other. Then the Duke asked if Toya could also build a bike for his daughter Sushi. So Toya wanted to build a bike for Sushi, and he went to town to get the materials. Suddenly he saw a child who had committed pickpocketing. The child was threatened by other criminals and they wanted to kill the child with a knife. 
Toya stopped the criminals and he wanted to protect the little boy. When the criminals threatened Toya, he showed his gun and he defeated the criminals with rubber bullets. The little boy thanked Toya, suddenly his stomach growled. Toya offered to buy the little boy some food and he learned that the little boy is a girl. Reen hadn't eaten anything for three days and Toya found out that Reen is an orphan. Also, she steals to survive and didn't have a home. Toya wanted to help Reen and he offered her a good paying job at his home. Reen was happy about his offer to get a home with a good salary. Reen was then employed as a maid, and all the girls thought Reen was very cute. Then we see Toya with Yumina and Sushi in town. They happened to meet Arma, who was also shopping in Miss Mead. Suddenly, Toya spotted Leon and Olger, who were on a date together. Toya and his friends spied on them and watched the two on the date. Then Olger and Leon went into a restaurant. Sushi and Arma were too curious and asked Toya to do something. Toya then used a Riz spell with his phone, and they were able to watch the date of the two lovers. Sushi also wanted to experience a romantic date, and Yumina said that she is too young. Then Olga and Leon left the restaurant, and a man bumped into Arma. He apologized, and Toya remarked that it was King Jamuka. Followed then, they watched Olga and Leon's date together. Then an ordinary man was harassed by bandits, and Leon wanted to help him. The criminals got angry with Leon and threatened him with knives. King Jamuka and Toya wanted to help Leon, and they attacked the criminals while wearing masks. Toya and Jamuka were too strong, and the criminals lost instantly. Leon recognized Toya by his pimp clothes. When Olger appeared, King Jamuka used his Axel skill to disappear. Toya didn't manage to use Axel in time, so he helped Leon confess his feelings to Olger. As a result, Olger was happy about his confession of love, and she blushed. The two became a cute couple, and everyone was happy for them. Then Toya returned to his home with Yumina and had guests waiting for him. The teddy bear Paula appeared and greeted him. Toya found out that Lean and Charlotte came to visit him, and Yumina was surprised that Lean is the head of the fairies. Lean wanted to talk to Toya about a defeated crystal monster. Lean said she recently discovered another crystal monster. The monster wiped out an entire village, and she heard that Toya had defeated one before. Then Toya learned that Charlotte is Lean's student to learn more about Riz. In addition, Lean told about a legend that demons named Freys almost destroyed the whole world many years ago, and the demons possessed crystal-like bodies. Lean asked Toya for help with her research. She wanted to use Toya's gate. Followed then, Toya replied that he can only teleport to familiar locations. So Lean told Toya about the skill named Recall. With the null spell Recall, he can combine with gate to teleport to other people's familiar locations. Lean wanted to go to Ishin because she wanted to explore the ancient ruins. Following this, Toya used the recall spell with the support of Yahe, and he was able to visualize himself through his girl to the land of Ishin. After that, Toya teleports himself and his friends into a forest of Ishin. So Toya and his friends were now in Ishin, and they were looking for the Neruya ruins. Followed Yahe showed her friends her hometown. Then Toya learned that Ishin was built like traditional Japan. Also Toya was surprised that the rulers of the regions had the same names as the Edo period rulers of Japan. Then the girls learned new things from Ishin. Toya was familiar with the culture, so he impressed Yahe with his knowledge. When Yahe arrived home, a servant greeted her. Followed her mother also showed up too. She was happy that Yahe was back home. After that, Yahe found out that her father and brother are on the battlefield to fight against the Takeda clan. Yahe was worried and asked Toya to help her family. Following this, Toya uses gate and he teleports them near of the battlefield. Toya used his phone to find out that her brother was safe, but he couldn't see the location of Yahe's father. Followed Lean said they needed a plan before going to the battlefield. Toya immediately had an idea, so he first wanted to teleport himself to the battlefield. When Toya was on the battlefield, he saw zombie soldiers. Then Yahe's brother Yutaro was reported that the attackers can only defeat it by destroying their mask. Suddenly, Toya teleported to the fortress, and he said that he isn't an enemy. Yutaro then learned that Toya is a friend of Yahe. Yutaro wanted to see his little sister, and Toya opened a gate, so Yahe immediately hugged her brother. The other girls also came out of the portal. After that, Toya saw the injured people and he cast a spell on his phone to heal the injured people. Toya managed to heal all of the injured instantly, and they were surprised by Toya's power. Toya then asked why the enemies are walking around like zombies. Yutaro replied that they found out that they can win by destroying the masks. Lean suspected that a special artifact turned the enemy soldiers into zombies, so Toya got an idea and he decided to defeat all enemies with just one attack. Toya used his phone and he located all the enemies. He then transferred his spell to his phone 
and he cast his powerful Holy Lance Shining Javelin spell that killed the enemies all at once. Everyone was impressed by Toya's powerful attack. After that, they visited the leader of the Tokugawa clan named Iyasu. He thanked Toya for the support, and Yahei's father also thanked Toya. Then the samurai found out that Toya is the future husband of Yumina. However, they learned that the leader of the Takeda clan has already died. As a result, Yamamoto Kansuki, who possesses an artifact to control a dead army, is responsible for the war. Toya and his friends didn't know where Kansuki was hiding. Suddenly, a cute ninja girl named Tsubaki appeared. She belonged to a general of the Takeda clan, and Iyasu learned that generals of the Takeda clan were killed or imprisoned by Kansuki. He planned the ambush alone, and he is striving for power. Tsubaki offered to help them, and Toya trusted Tsubaki because she looks very cute. Following this, Toya decided to invade enemy territory with Lin and Tsubaki. After that, Toya wanted to read Tsubaki's mind, and all the girls were jealous. During the night they teleported to the enemy territory, and Lin used a skill that can make them invisible. Toya tried to enter the mansion with gate, and it failed through a barrier. Suddenly, Lin looked at Tsubaki's breasts, and she started playing with them. Tsubaki thought Toya was playing with her huge boobs. As a result, Tsubaki liked having her breasts massaged, and Toya was very uncomfortable that Lin said Toya is grabbing her boobs. Toya stopped Lin, and Tsubaki didn't believe Toya that Lin was playing with her boobs. After that, they found one of the Takeda generals in a prison. Toya freed him, and they went on to free more people. All Takeda generals were freed, and they wanted to find Kansuki to get revenge. Then Toya went to stop Kansuki's evil plans. So he destroyed the barrier and used his Holy Lance Shining Javelin spell again to defeat all zombie soldiers. Then the villain Kansuki was found. One of the men charges at Kansuki, but the death leader of the Takeda clan was used as a puppet. The Takeda servants didn't want to fight against their leader. So Toya attacked the puppet, and Kansuki was confident that he cannot lose with his magical artifact. Suddenly Toya used his null magic, and he stole his magic eye. Lin realized that the stone is cursed, which makes a person evil. Toya destroyed the magic artifact with his gun. Following this, Kansuki also died as a result, and the death leader of the Takedas was able to find peace. After that, peace returned in Ishin, and Toya learned from General Kusaka that the Nuruya ruins is near an island on the seafloor. Toya find the location, and he immediately picked up his girls. So Toya said goodbye to Yahi's family, and they teleported to a beach. When they arrived, the girls were amazed by the beautiful view, and Toya localized the ruins with his mobile phone. The girls wanted Toya to open a portal to Belfast, because they wanted to have some fun. Followed Toya decided to have some fun at the beach with his friends. Toya also invited the royal family and his other friends to the beach. They were happy about the vacation with Toya, and everyone thanked him for the invitation. After that, Toya set up two tents as dressing rooms, and he also produced toys. When the girls were in the changing room, the girls put on their bikinis. Yumina and Elsa were jealous of the others, because they had big boobs. Then Toya saw the girls in bikini, and he loved the view of their half-naked bodies. Then Elsa warmed up, and they ran into the sea together. Toya thought he was in the paradise. Toya blushed by watching the pretty girls in bikinis. Also he enjoyed watching their big boobs shaking. Then Toya found out that Lindsay can't swim, so she went sunbathing on the beach. After that, Sushi and Rin also showed up in swimsuits, and he said they both look very cute. They were happy to play in the sea, and Toya took a picture so they will remember the great beach day. Then the two little girls went to play, and made Cecile appeared behind Toya. Toya was stunned by her large breasts, and Cecile told Toya that she couldn't find a bikini that fit. Toya had Riz, and he was a big boobs magnet. After that, Toya kept staring at her wobbly breasts, and made Lapis wondered what Toya was doing. Toya was worried that Lapis wasn't having fun, and she said that Cecile would relieve her later. After that, Toya relaxed in the sun, and Yumina wanted to show him her bikini. He complimented her and said she is pretty. Yumina wanted to go swimming with him, but he wanted to explore the ruins first. Lin then showed up, and Toya learned that her teddy bear can also swim, and that a water repellent spell was cast on Lin's teddy bear. Toya used the same spell to keep him from getting wet. Also he learned that his cute tiger Kohaku doesn't like swimming. Afterwards, Lin asked why Tsubaki wasn't invited because Lin knew Toya would like to see Tsubaki in a bikini with her big breasts. Toya blushed, and he was impressed that Lin could read his mind. After that, Toya wanted to dive into the sea to explore the ruins. Lin said she didn't dive with him, and Toya dove into the sea alone. 
Then he discovered a temple in the sea floor, but he couldn't stay underwater long enough. Toya reported to Lean that he couldn't hold his breath in the sea. So Lean asked if Charlotte knew a magic spell to solve their problem. Charlotte didn't know any spells, and she was punished by Lean. As a result, she wasn't allowed to wear normal clothes until she remembered the desired spell. Toya was shocked that Lean is a pervert. Suddenly, Kohaku had an idea to solve Toya's problem. Kohaku told about the Black Monarch and Lean helped Toya to summon the Black Monarch. Then Toya learned from Kohaku that the Black Monarch has two personalities. Toya then mixed her magic with his tiger Kohaku and together they summoned the Black Monarch. Suddenly, a monster appeared. They recognized Kohaku immediately. One of the notables personally looked down on Kohaku for serving a weak human. Kohaku was convinced that Toya will also become their master. Then, as a condition of making a pact with the monster, Toya had to win against them in a fight. Toya agreed to the fight, and he immediately used his slip spell. The fused snake and turtle stumbled, and Toya created an infinite spell with the spell slip. Toya attacked the turtle, and he programmed an endless loop. The black monarch couldn't get up, and Toya just decided to wait. Then we see the girls playing volleyball. Elsa and Lindsay were in a team, and they won against Yahi and Yumina. Suddenly the bikini of Lindsay slipped off and she lost her bikini. Then they realized Toya wasn't around, and they hoped Toya wouldn't do kinky things with Lean. Toya didn't do anything indecent, he just annoyed the Black Monarch. However, the Black Monarch accepted Toya as their new master, and he named the snake Kokuyu and the turtle Sango. The two were happy with their new name. Followed Kohaku wanted the two to transform into a smaller version as well. So the two also turned into cute pets. Kokuyu and Sango were able to levitate and were willing to support Toya. Then Toya decided to explore the ruins later. He first wanted to spend some time with his girls. Then Toya went to the girls and they were jealous of Lean. The girls then wanted to know which girl he thinks is the prettiest in a bikini. Toya knew he was in trouble and he replied that Sushi is the prettiest. The girls were afraid that Toya was into little girls and his phone slipped out of his pocket with the photo of Sushi and Rin. Toya said it was just a souvenir photo, but the girls didn't believe him. So Yumina said she trusts Toya that he wasn't into little girls. Followed then, they went into the sea together, and they enjoyed the time playing with Toya. In the evening, Toya wanted to explore the ruins with the help of Sango and Kokuyu. So Toya was able to breathe underwater. Toya explored a temple, and he discovered a mysterious room. Followed Toya used magic, and he dissolved a magic circle. Toya was teleported to another room full of flowers. Suddenly Francesca appeared. She was the terminal that controlled the aerial garden of Babylon. Toya then asked why she wasn't wearing some panties. So Toya was shocked by seeing Francesca panties. He didn't know where he should look. As a result, Toya was feeling awkward by seeing her without a skirt. Then Francesca said she had a skirt, and she was hoping Toya would touch her a little bit. After that, Toya wanted to know more about the garden, and Francesca showed him the Garden of Babylon. Francesca also told that the garden was created by Professor Regina Babylon, and it's a floating island. Suddenly, Toya's pet Sango said that the girl isn't a human. Toya learned that Francesca is an android assembled from biological components and machine parts. Also she can't give birth, but she is capable of intercourse, and she is still a virgin. Afterwards Francesca said that she recognized him as suitably compatible. As a result, Toya was named to be her new master. Toya was chosen because only people with all affinities can activate the portal. Followed Toya learned that he wasn't chosen by possessing all affinities, but rather by his majesty Riz Aura. So Toya became the new master of the perverted Francesca. Meanwhile the other girls were playing on the beach, and Yahe spotted a crab. She tried to catch the crab and Charlotte tripped. Suddenly she was hit by a huge wave and the crab went into the huge boobs of Charlotte. So Yumina and Elsie were jealous of Charlotte's and the other girls for having big boobs. Followed Yahe said her breasts are just collecting sand. Then Lean showed up, and Charlotte realized she had something important to do. Followed then, they were worried about Toya because he had been in the ruins for a very long time. Suddenly Toya opened a portal and he showed his girls the Garden of Babylon. Lean said that the room looks similar like the ruins of the ancient Parthino civilization. After that, Lean noticed the girl next to Toya. Lean asked him if the girl next to him is his new wife. Lindsay was immediately angry and Toya tried to clear up the misunderstanding. Toya explained that she is the owner of the garden, and she disagreed, saying the ownership was transferred to her master Toya. She then said that Toya is her beloved husband. She lied and the girls were angry with Toya. So Toya didn't manage to clear up the misunderstanding and the girls found out that Toya had seen their panties. 
As a result, the girls were shocked, and Toya was still trying to clear up the misunderstanding. Then Toya was confronted, and he was scolded by Lindsay to be a pervert. Lindsay was very jealous and shocked by Toya's fetish for panties. Lean then offered him to see her panties too. Toya refused and he was afraid by Lindsay. Then Lean ended the argument between the two, and Yumina supported Lean. So they all went for a walk, and Yumina asked if the three girls remembered their conversation. The girls recalled talking about Toya, that they are all have a crush on Toya, because he got the Majesty Riz power. So we see that all the girls blushed when they thought of Toya. Yumina said that Toya is a special man, and she didn't want to be selfish and would share him. She then suggested that all four girls marry Toya, and the girls were embarrassed and didn't dare to continue the conversation. So Yumina ended the conversation first, because the girls weren't sure about their feelings. Back in the present, Yumina asked if they are now aware that they are all in love with Toya. Yumina knew that all three of them always want to be near Toya, and they always get nervous by seeing him. The girls admitted that they are in love with Toya, and they blushed. Then Yumina decided that all three girls would marry the Riz Master Toya too, and they all thought about their marriage with Toya, and how their marriage would be look like. The girls wanted to marry Toya, but they were all nervous about becoming Toya's wife. Meanwhile, Toya talked to Lean about the Garden of Babylon. Lean was intrigued by the garden story, and Toya said that the professor, who created Babylon, is a pervert. Lean then learned that there are many several areas drifting in the sky. They are controlled by Francesca's sisters, and Toya was very confused. So Lean explained to him that Babylon was an island that divided and flies everywhere in the world. After that, the other girls showed up, and they learned about the nine floating islands that together form Babylon. Followed, they decided to find the other floating islands, and Toya realizes that his phone couldn't locate the islands. So his only choice was to find the magic circles like before. Then Lean asked what Toya is planning to do with Francesca as her new master. Followed then, Francesca said that she wanted to be Toya's servant. Toya accepted and she wanted to register Toya as a master. Then she kissed him all of a sudden. The girls were shocked by Toya and Francesca's passionate French kiss. When the kiss was over, Toya was frozen and blushed. So Yumina was angry as she had never kissed him before, and Francesca said that was the only option to collect Toya's genetic samples. Suddenly, Lindsay stand up, and she made a love confession to Toya, followed by a French kiss. In the evening, Toya and his girls returned to their mansion, and Francesca was hired as maid. Then Toya lay down in his bed, and he had to think about Lindsay's confession of love and her passionate kiss. Suddenly, Yumina knocked on his door. She wanted to talk with Toya about the kiss. Yumina was angry at Toya, because they are engaged, and she hadn't gotten a kiss yet. Toya was surprised that Yumina wasn't angry, because Lindsay made him a love confession. She then said that everyone could see that Lindsay has a crush on him, and Toya apologized for not noticing her feelings. Then Yumina said that she didn't mind, because nobles have normally more than two wives, but now he has to kiss and hug her too. So Toya made amends, and he kissed Yumina on the mouth. Yumina was happy about their kiss, and she asked him about his feelings towards Lindsay. Toya replied that he thinks Lindsay is cute too. Suddenly Toya said that he was unsure of his feelings and couldn't say who he ended up choosing. Then Lindsay appeared. Lean cast her invisibility spell to make her invisible. Lindsay overheard their conversation and she cried because she didn't answer to her confession. Toya then apologized to her and said he loves her too. After that, Yumina suggested that Toya should make Lindsay to his fiancé, since it's normal for kings and nobles to have multiple wives. Lindsay was happy that the misunderstanding was cleared up, and she ended as Toya's fiancé too, so it was decided that both girls would become Toya's wife. The Rizmaster Toya was surprised, and the two wanted a goodnight kiss. So Toya and his two fiancés went to sleep. In the next morning, Elsa showed up. She wanted to talk with Toya outside of their mansion. Yahe was also waiting for Toya, and the two said they found out about Lindsay's engagement. The two girls then challenged Toya to a fight. The loser had to grant the winner a wish. So Toya was asked to blunt his sword. After that, their fight started and Yahe attacked Toya with her samurai sword. She was instantly defeated by the rubber bullets. Meanwhile, Elsa attempted to attack Toya, but she was overwhelmed by his immense power. Toya said she can give up, but she refused. Suddenly Elsa said that she and Yahe are also in love with Toya, and Toya was out of ammo. As a result, Toya lost the fight, and the two girls confessed their love to Toya. Toya was surprised to get more confessions, and he didn't understand anything. So the two wished that he would marry them both too. However, Yumina explained to him the reason for the fight, and Elsa wanted an answer to her confession of love. 
Toya didn't know how to answer, and he wanted more time to think about their marriage. Then we see Toya in the Garden of Babylon, he told Francesca his problem. Toya loved all four girls, but he wasn't sure if he could be a good husband for all his girls. Suddenly Francesca said that she had a message from Professor Regina. Toya was able to talk to her on his phone through the new Riz Tinder app. She then made a joke and showed him her panties. Afterwards Regina told that she had a tool to to see into the future. She then said that the future are changing every time, because the phrase's appearance are unexpected. Finally the professor gave him some advice and tried to help him with his problem. After that, Toya visited God, and Toya told him about his problems. God encouraged him and gave him the same advice as Professor Regina. Toya was still unsure, and God called the goddess of love for help. Toya learned that she also looks at Toya's life, and she always supports people in love. The goddess of love said he doesn't have to worry too much about it, and Toya was encouraged by her. Following this, the goddess of love said that she was responsible for the perverted situations. When Toya got back to his mansion, Kohaku should call the girls. Then Toya said that he doesn't want to get married yet. The girls were immediately shocked, but Toya said he's afraid he can't make them happy because he is very young. So Toya promised that he would get engaged to the four of them, but he didn't want to marriage now. He said that they need to get to know each other more, and if they don't lose interest in him in the years to come, he would like to marry all four of them. The girls said they will love him forever, and they accepted his decision. As a result, Toya had four fiancés, and they all wanted a kiss from Toya. That's how Toya wanted to kiss Elsa first, but she was too shy and knocked him out. Lean and the others watched out the window and enjoyed the great show. Suddenly Francesca said that according to the professor, Toya will end with nine women in his future life. In the following days we see Toya and his girls. They were fighting against two mithril golems. The golem threw a huge rock at them, but they dodged the attack in time. Yahe then tried to attack a golem and her katana sword was broken. Toya was shocked by their defenses and came up with a plan to destroy them. Then Toya used his gate spell and he teleports the golem to the sky. After that, he used his cell phone to check where the golem will land. As a result, the mithril golems fell from heaven. Then Toya and his girls used all the Axel spell. The golems were badly damaged and the girls immediately attacked together. After Lindsay cast her spell, her twin sister Elsa attacked the golem. The first golem was defeated and Yumina cast a spell too. She destroyed the second golem with her lightning javelin spell. However, the two strong mithril golems were defeated by Toya's group, and they collected the magic orbs. As a result, they managed to complete their quest. They then returned to Toya's mansion, and he was immediately greeted by Reen and Cecile. Toya said that their group defeated mithril golems successfully, and almost all of them were promoted to red rank adventurers. Then Toya realized that he had forgotten his servant Francesca. He immediately picked her up in the Garden of Babylon. However, she was angry with her master, and she teased Toya for his recklessness. Then Toya apologized to Francesca for his behavior. After that, Lian wanted to talk about the magic circles of Babylon. Toya was surprised that she really wants to find the other parts of Babylon. So Toya said that, if she finds any clues, he will help her to find the magic circles of Babylon. Suddenly Toya got a call from God, so he teleports to the God realm. God invited Toya to his home, because he wanted to know, if Toya enjoys his life with Almighty Riz. Toya replied that he is very thankful for getting so much Riz. Then God wanted to give Toya a new iPhone, but Toya replied that his current iPhone is perfectly fine. Meanwhile, the goddess of love looked at his phone. She asked why he didn't have his fiancés as his home screen. Toya thought it would be embarrassing, but he was lectured by the goddess of love. She said that he should immediately change his home screen with the picture of his girls and he was persuaded by both gods to take a picture of his fiancées at home. Meanwhile, his girls were relaxing with a bath. Else looked at her engagement ring, and Yumina said that she loves Toya's engagement ring too. Lindsay also liked the ring. The rings are special, and gave the girls power to use skills like the Excel spell and item box. Yahe agreed that the rings are very beautiful and useful at the same time. Then Yumina said that Toya is a great and handsome man. Everyone agreed with Yumina's opinion, and she said that people will want to take advantage of the good-natured Toya in the future. She then said that they have to take good care of Toya, to protect Toya from evil people. Also Yumina said that they all knew, about the almighty Riz power of Toya. So they should prepare themselves, that he will get more fiancés in the future. In the following days we see Toya and Yahe, they were in Ishin. Toya commissioned the blacksmith to make a mithril katana sword. Then Yahe wanted to hold hands with Toya. Toya was overwhelmed by her cuteness, and he blushed by looking at her cute face. 
As a result, they held hands together, and Yahi enjoyed their time together as a couple. In the afternoon, Toya visited the royal family with Yumina. Yumina's mother gave her advice as a future wife. Then the king wished Toya good luck with his four future wives. Suddenly the king said that he is looking forward for his first grandchildrens. Suddenly, Yumina punched her father because she was embarrassed by his words. After that, Toya learned from Yumina's mother that many will not recognize their engagement. The reason is Toya had no great heroic deeds to show. However, Sushi appeared. She was happy to see her cousin Yumina. Then Toya spent time together with Sushi and the royal family. Later he returned home, and Toya learned that, if the royal family doesn't bear a son in the next time, he will become the next king. Toya then reflected on the queen's words, that he must show heroic deeds to marry Yumina. The next day, Toya visited the Silver Moon Inn, and he learned from his two friends that their town have problems, that the tourists didn't want to visit their town. Toya came up with an idea and decided to help them. So Toya built a Japanese onsen at the Silver Moon Inn. Toya then invited all of his friends to try his homemade onsen. His girls were impressed by Toya's onsen, and Yumina teased the three shy girls a bit. Then Yumina asked all three girls, when they realized they were in love with Toya. Else then replied that she fell in love with him, because he is such a great gentleman and she loves his beautiful eyes. Yumina agreed that Toya got Riz, and she wanted to hear Linz's story. Yahei was looking forward to her story, so Linza said that she fell in love with him, because she was very shy around guys. In addition, Toya always listens to her, and he was very nice, and always shows great interest. As a result, she felt the sense of secrecy around him. Then Lindsay said she doesn't know exactly when she fell in love with him. Afterwards, Yahi shared that she fell in love with Toya when she saw his good nature. She loved that he doesn't judge others and always saves people in need. All the girls confessed their love for Toya and Elsa wanted to hear Yumina's story. However, Yumina replied that she fell in love with him immediately when they met. The three girls were touched that it was love at first sight for Yumina. Suddenly, Francesca told Toya that she is about to climb over the wall to see him naked. Francesca became paralyzed, and Toya warned the other men not to try to climb over the wall. Suddenly Lean showed up in the men's bathroom. She had clues about the Babylon floating islands. Later, Toya and his friends flew to a ruin that Lean discovered. She was sure to find a magic circle of Babylon. Toya didn't show a lot of interest, and he infuriated Lean. She expected Toya to be more enthusiastic, so she teased him a bit. Then a phrase appeared the monster chasing innocent people. Toya decided to help them and came up with a rescue plan. Suddenly the people in need were attacked by the phrase, but Elsa was able to deflect the attack. The twins wanted to keep the women and men safe. Then Toya opened his gate and Yahe attacked the phrase. She fell off the phrase and Toya saved her with his gate spell. The phrase then fired a laser beam at Toya and his friends. Toya was overwhelmed by the monster and hid behind a rock. Suddenly he ran into a friend that he learned a few days ago. Enda had a great deal of knowledge about the monsters called Phrase. He then teleports to the Phrase and he destroys the monster's body with just one attack. Toya was surprised by Enda's power. Also, Toya's friend destroyed the Phrase's two cores. Then Toya inquired about the world barrier and he learned that there is a barrier in his world that keeps out foreign objects. Enda said that they were able to enter their world through a hole in the barrier and they are only henchmen. Then Enda disappeared and Toya took care of the rescued people. They got drinks and thanked Toya for saving them in the dangerous situation. Toya learned that they group wanted to save the enslaved girls. Also, she said the slave necklace caused a lot of pain and problems for the girls. They wanted to find someone who could remove the slave necklace. Suddenly, the adventurers learned that Toya can remove the dangerous item. Toya used his skill apports and he freed all the girls from slavery. After that, Toya asked what their next plan is. They said that the girls have no home. Then Yumina appeared, introducing herself as the princess of the kingdom Belfast. She said all girls can live in the kingdom of Belfast. The adventurers and girls thanked Yumina, so Toya allowed the adventurers and the girls to stay in Toya's mansion for the time being. Suddenly Lean asked about the unknown boy. Toya told her that he had met Endi in town. Endi wanted to buy a crepe, but his money was rejected. Toya paid for him, and he showed Endi the guild. Then Toya held the coin of Endi, and Francesca recognized the coin. The coin was created over 5,000 years ago, and Leon found the boy Ende very suspicious. Toya agreed that he is a little bit suspect. Then the girls found out that Toya was hiding something. So Toya told that he had a conversation with the professor Regina. She told Toya about the demons named Phrase, that they appeared out of nowhere and destroyed the world. 
Toya apologized for forgetting to tell his girls about it. Then Lian wondered how many phrase monsters lived 5,000 years ago and why they disappeared. Francesca then told about a weapon named Frame Gear that was built by Professor Regina. Toya was super excited about the new high-tech weapon and he wanted to see the Frame Gear right away. Following this, Toya was excited to explore the ruins to find the Frame Gear weapon. After that, Toya's group went in search of the ruin and Lin used wind magic on it. Then Toya found a secret room and he couldn't use his gate spell. However, Toya went to the magic circle and he filled the circle with magic. So Toya was teleported to another location. Suddenly, the android Rosetta appeared. Toya learned that he discovered the workshop of Babylon. Then Rosetta learned that Francesca already accepted Toya as compatible. Rosetta then asked perverted questions and asked Toya to guess the color of her panties. As a result, Toya tried to figure out the color of her panties with wind magic. His first attempt failed, and he used fire magic. Rosetta's skirt was magic repellent, so Toya used a newly learned spell. Toya used the long sense spell and found out that her panties are transparent. He shocked, and Rosetta accepted him as her Riz master. Followed, she gave Toya a passionate French kiss to register him as her new master. After that, Toya was shown the workshop of Babylon. The workshop has high technology. Then arriving in an empty room, Rosetta conjured a device. The device could create objects and tools. Toya then wanted to know if he could copy his gun. Toya wanted to make a mithril gun, and the machine immediately made his new gun. In addition, Rosetta showed that he can customize the design of his gun. Toya was amazed, and he wanted to test his new weapon, but the programming was not copied. In addition, Toya learned that he can also order mass production. After that, Toya wanted to know more about the frame gear. Toya learned that Rosetta was involved in building the gun, but they stored the weapon in a different location. However, Rosetta said that her workshop is much better than the Garden of Babylon. Toya stopped the argument from the two androids, and he asked if the two islands of Babylon could be united. However, Toya arrived at his mansion, and the adventurers apologized to Toya for the rudeness, because Toya is engaged to Princess Yumina. Toya said they can get up, because Cecile was telling them a lot of nonsense. After that, the adventurers asked, if Toya had a job for the girls, since they haven't work experience. So Toya came up with a plan for the rescued girls. A few days later we see Toya, he opened a maid cafe. Then the adventurers reported that his idea of opening a maid cafe was a complete success. So the girls got a job, and the adventure group also thanked Toya for their security job. Toya was happy that he was able to use the profits from his bicycle manufacture to raise enough money to open the maid cafe. Then Toya found out that Lindsay had chosen the books that many women love. Toya was surprised and happy that customers can also eat delicious cakes while reading. Afterwards, Will said that he wished he could use special null magic too. Additionally, Will told Toya that his grandpa could use null magic. This is how Toya learned about a new spell called gravity that can affect the weight of a subject. Later, Toya accompanied Yumina to the guild. Yumina was happy to spend time together with Toya. She also wanted to finally rise in rank. They then discovered a quest to go hunt a giant crab. When Toya wanted to apply for the quest, receptionist Prim checked his ID. She told him that she often visits his maid cafe. She then asked if Toya could order a book called The Order of the Rose. Toya found out that there is a whole series of books, and he wanted to order the books for Prim. After that, Yumina told that the book is very pervert. Toya was surprised Lindsay was into gay romance books. Then Toya thought that Yumina also likes to read kinky books. Yumina then replied that she doesn't really like reading such books. Followed Yumina told Toya that she just happened to know the author of the books. So Toya learned that the eldest daughter of the referee's imperium is the author of the books. Toya was shocked when Yumina told him that her childhood friend Riri is a perverted book author who writes about gay romance. After that, Toya went hunting for a giant bloody crab. Arriving in the desert, Yumina immediately cast a spell on Mr. Krabs. Then one of Mr. Krebs' leg was shot. Following this, Toya teleports behind the giant crab. Toya used his newly learned gravity spell, and he was able to defeat Mr. Krabs. After the fight, Yumina asked what dish Toya wants to cook with Mr. Krabs. He replied that he plans to cook delicious crabby patties. After the quest, they returned to the guild together, and Yumina was promoted to a higher rank. Yumina was happy to be finally ranked red too. Then Toya said he wanted to go buy the books right away. Suddenly he asked Prim if she could give him a piece of paper that listed many popular books. Then she asked all her friends for ideas that the women wanted to read. Followed, then Prim named them all the popular books that the women like. 
all the women were looking forward to reading the perverted novels, and Toya was shocked. Then we see the capital of the referee's empire, and Toya was in a bookstore. He showed a woman the books, which he wanted to buy. Then Toya said that he just buy them for his own shop, because he was embarrassed to buy the kinky books. After that, Toya looked at more books, and he heard a girl cry. She was disappointed, because she wanted to buy a kinky books. Unfortunately, Toya had bought almost all of the books. Then Toya found out about the problem, and the girl was looking for the last book in the Rosemagi series. She asked if she could buy it from Toya. Suddenly the girl discovers that Toya had bought the book series, The Order of the Rose. She thought Toya was a fanboy of gay romance. The girl then said that she is the author of a book. She suggested giving him an autograph in exchange for the book, Rosemagi. Toya wasn't interested to make a deal with the girl. The girl thought that Toya considered her as a scammer. Followed Toya tested her and asked if she is the Princess Riri. The princess couldn't believe that Toya knew her true identity. However, Princess Riri thought that Toya wanted to blackmail her and seduce her big brother to get power of the empire. Toya stopped her to fantasize such nonsense and clarified the misunderstanding. This is how Princess Riri learned that Yumina told him her true identity. Also Toya told her that he is Yumina's fiancé, and Riri was surprised that Toya isn't gay. So Princess Riri was hit on the head again by Toya to stop her from telling such nonsense. He then teleported Yumina to him, and he duplicated the Book of Rosemagi for Princess Riri. Princess Riri was grateful, but still thought Toya was a fanboy of kinky novels. Toya got angry, and Riri understood that she should stop talking now. He then placed the new books in his store, and the girls from the guild were extremely happy. Then they all read the books about gay romance, and Prim thanked Toya for buying all the great books. After that we see a girl she asked for a book, Lindsay helped the girl out, so she showed the customer where to find the books, then Will apologized for not being helpful, and Toya cheered him up. He then thanked Will for teaching him the gravity spell, so Toya wanted to grant him a wish. Will said that he would like to get stronger. Toya immediately realized that he wanted to get stronger to protect his crush. As a result, Toya brought Will to the leader of the knights. Toya asked his friend to help to become stronger. After that, Elsa showed up, and she asked if Toya could teleport her to the Inn Silvermoon, because she wanted to bathe in the onsen there. Toya teleports to Inn Silvermoon, and he talked to Micah. Micah said that her business with the onsen is a great success. Then Merchant Zanuck also showed up. He became a regular at the Silvermoon Inn. He was visiting the onsen every day. Toya then learned that the clothes he had ordered were ready to be delivered. Followed Toya gave Elsa beautiful Chinese-style clothes. Toya called Elsa pretty, and Elsa blushed in front of Toya. She was happy that Toya gave her beautiful clothes. Suddenly she tripped and Toya activated his Riz power. He had infinite Riz that Elsa looked at him in love. In the days that followed, Lindsay told Toya that author Riel Refrize had released a new book. Toya learned that Princess Riri had written a story about him. Princess Riri wrote in her story that Toya will marry nine men in the future. Toya was angry and he wanted to beat her up for writing such nonsense. A few days later, Toya received more requests for ordering books. He wanted to teleport to the kingdom of Regulus. Toya told Lindsay that he wanted to buy new books right away. Then we see Toya in the kingdom of Regulus, and Toya saw many peoples in fear. Toya heard screams, and he reinforced his body with the boost spell. Following Toya discovered enemies, who want to kill innocent soldiers. Toya rushed to the rescue of a soldier, and he found an injured guy with white hair. Toya learned that the military were rebel against the kingdom. So Toya healed the guy, and he took him to safety. As a result, Toya decided to find the king to save his family. Toya immediately ran to the royal palace. Then he saw many dead soldiers. Suddenly he heard a girl scream. Toya used his new iPhone, and he used Siri to locate the girl's whereabouts. Then a girl was almost killed, but Toya managed to save her in time. Toya then healed her injury with his null magic spell. The rescued princess was in shock, but she calmed down immediately when she felt the riz of Toya. She was very shy around Toya and blushed. Suddenly Carol appeared, she was happy that the princess was alive. However, Toya told that he is an adventurer of the kingdom Belfast, who teleported to the town. Carol was surprised that Toya knew teleportation magic. She then asked Toya to teleport the royal family out of the capital. After that, the two introduced themselves, and Toya learned that the rescued girl is Princess Lucia. Then Toya wanted to teleport the princess to Belfast, but she worried about her family members. Toya wanted to help to finding her family. Followed they searched the palace for Princess Lucia's family. After that, they found King Zephyr in his bedroom. 
he was injured, and General Bezoar attacked the king. The leader of the military was furious that Lucia and Carol survived. Bezoar then said that he was proposing to cancel the peace contract with Belfast. He wanted to conquer the other lands, and the king was against his plan. So Toya asked if Bezoar had any chance of winning against the other kingdoms. Suddenly, Bezoar revealed his newfound power. Balzoar ate a devil fruit and he could summon a powerful demon. Toya couldn't believe he was a devil fruit user, who can control a strong demon. So Balzoar said that he is invincible. In addition, he displayed bracelets that absorbed the magic of his opponents. Toya tried to steal Balzoar's bracelet with a spell. Unfortunately, the demon's skill had negated his magic. After that, Toya attacked with his pistol, but his attack was deflected by another bracelet. Toya understood that he is currently invincible and he cannot harm him now. Suddenly, Toya noticed that King Zephyr is still alive, so he teleports the royal family and Carol to Belfast. Then Toya said he will come back and stop him. Toya then used the slip spell, and the general couldn't get up. Toya looked down at him, and he made fun of the general. He activated an illusion spell before retreating. Later, Toya reported on the plight of Refri's kingdom. The girls found the situation awful, and they had no idea how to solve the rebellion. Suddenly, Toya replied that he has a nasty plan to defeat General Balzoar. Later he checked on the king, and he told Princess Lucia that her father is recovering. Lucia had a crush on Toya, and she wanted him to call her Lu. Meanwhile, Yumina watched the two. Yumina then introduced herself to Lu, and she noticed that Lu had a crush on Toya. Toya went to the king's mansion, and Lu was sad to learn that Toya had a fiancé. Suddenly, Yumina asked if Princess Lucia is in love with Toya. She understood that Toya is an attractive man. After that, we see Toya talking to the king. Suddenly, Yumina's father said that Yumina's mother is pregnant. He wasn't entirely satisfied, because his original plan was to crone Toya as the next king. After that, Toya went to his workshop on the island of Babylon. He learned from Rosetta that the enemy's bracelets were an invention of Professor Regina. Toya learned that the bracelets is fallen from one of Babylon's island. However, Toya recalled that there were more artifacts that he had seen before. In the evening, King Zephyr woke up and thanked Toya for saving him. Following this, King Zephyr apologized for all the trouble he was causing. Suddenly, Toya said he could retake the capital the next morning. Then Lu asked if Toya could find her big brother first. Followed Toya asked about his appearance. So Toya used physical contact to get more information. Suddenly, Toya realized that he already have rescued Lu's brother. Toya immediately located the prince with his new iPhone and showed Lu's father the whereabouts of her big brother. Lu and her father were happy that the prince is alive. The next day, Toya decided to retake the capital. So Toya went with his girls and pets to reclaim the capital of the Refri's kingdom. Toya quickly managed to defeat the enemies, and he got ready to fight the strong demon. The demon attacked Toya, but he was able to dodge all dangerous attacks. Toya then attacked with his sword and managed to overwhelm the demon. Toya defeated the demon with just one punch, because he is also known as One Punch Man. Then his girls appeared, and they defeated the other enemies too. After that, only General Balzoar remained, and he looked down on Toya. Balzoar didn't want to accept his defeat, and Toya conjured up a huge glass box. Then Toya showed slimes that had absorbed sewage, so Toya said they have a disgusting smell. Suddenly, Balzoar was teleported into the box. Balzoar couldn't become the next president of Canada, and he fainted from the stench. As a result, the demon also disappeared. After the fight, the King Zephyr informed his citizens that he had defeated the enemies. He apologized for the trouble caused by the military and said that peace is now restored. After that, Toya went home and the girls told him that he stinks. Toya said he accidentally touched the slimes and he's going to take a shower right away. In the days that followed, King Zephyr wanted to grant Toya a wish, but Toya said he didn't need a reward. Then King Tristwin said that Toya is very humble. He was glad that he nevertheless agreed to marry his daughter. So King Zephyr had the idea that Toya also marries his daughter Lu. This would strengthen the relationship between the two kingdoms. Suddenly, Yumina interrupted the king's conversation. She said that she had already spoken to Lu and that Princess Lu would approve of marrying Riz Master Toya. Toya was shocked that he was getting another wife, and Princess Lu was happy that she is now also engaged to Toya. Later, Lu celebrated that she is now officially engaged to Toya as well, and the other girls congratulated her. Afterwards, Toya said he isn't old enough to get married now. The kings replied that they didn't expect them to marry immediately. However, his friend Leon cheered him up. 
Also the kings wanted to announce the engagement to the citizens of the kingdoms as soon as possible. Suddenly, Toya found out that he was given a small land between the two kingdoms. He would then become king of the gifted land and could set the laws. Toya didn't want to be king, but he knew that the two kings leaves him no choice. Then we see Toya and his girls coming up with names for his new kingdom. So Toya decided to name his kingdom Brunhilde. After that, they considered coming up with a plan for their move to their own nation. So Toya considered building a new mansion. Suddenly Lou appeared. She made up for Toya. Toya said she looks cute in her outfit. However, Lou suggested that Toya could build a castle because he will be a future king. Toya looked at castles, but he had no idea about the constructions. So Rosetta appeared to help her master. Below we see Toya in the workshop of Babylon. Rosetta told him that he can build a castle in his workshop. As a result, Toya was overwhelmed with a lot of information. He got angry, and Lou gave Toya a great idea of building their castle. In the days that followed, we see the new castle was built. Toya was shocked that Rosetta was able to completely build a castle in just three days. Then Rosetta showed the girls around their new home. Suddenly, Lean appeared behind Toya. She is surprised that he is now becoming a king. Toya said he doesn't want to be the future king of his own nations, or the king of Belfast. He said there is also the possibility of not becoming a king if Yumina gets a little brother. Lian then said that she became the ambassador of Mismede. Later, Toya built a teleportation room. Reen also appeared, and Toya wanted to test his teleportation room. So Toya asked Reen to put her hand on the door. As a result, a portal opened, and Toya's new invention was a complete success. Suddenly Reen showed him a letter. He was called to King Tristwin. Followed he met the King of Refris. He wanted to establish good relations between Toya's new nation. However, Toya thought that he must marry the perverted Princess Riri. The king said his daughter is already engaged to someone, and Toya was relieved. Following he said that he would be happy if Toya would show him around his new nation Brunhilde. Toya saw through the two, they just wanted to go on vacation. Over the next few weeks, Toya turned his new castle into a holiday paradise. He built many games for entertainment. The girls were happy to test the new games, and they had a lot of fun. Then Toya relaxed with Francesca on the massage seats, and Toya was called by Elsa. She played mahjong with the other girls, and Elsa was a pro mahjong player. Toya was shocked, and he couldn't believe that she played mahjong for the first time. After that, all his fiancés were relaxing on the massage seats, and the maids cleaned the rooms. Tsubaki then showed up for a visit. Toya was happy to see her again. Then Toya learned that they have problems back in Ishin. Tsubaki said that a tyrant has appeared, who is trying to enslave the people. They couldn't do something against him. As a result, the generals of the Takeda clan all wanted to take refuge in the new nation of Toya. Toya didn't mind, and he allowed them to move into his new nation. In the afternoon, the Takeda generals thanked Toya for allowing them to move into his new nation. Followed Toya asked if he can meet the fourth general. Following this, Toya met General Kosaka, who wanted to help Toya establish trade relations. So he gave Toya a lot of advice, and they built roads, fields, and new houses on his land. Toya managed to build a small village for the new residents in just a short time. In addition, he had built a path for tourists to visit his new city too. Then we see Lu, she was still nervous, because she didn't want to be a burden to Toya. So the other girls cheered her up, and she was looking forward. A few days later, Toya continued to build his new nation, and the children were greeting Toya. Then Lu showed up, she cooked him a delicious bento for lunch. She was nervous since it was her first time cooking a bento. Toya replied that her food is delicious. Then Toya said she looks cute and she blushed. In the days that followed, Toya's holiday paradise for the royal family started. They all had a great time at Toya's new home. Then Leon said that Toya had performed a miracle because he had united many kingdoms. Then Sushi showed up. She wanted to play with Toya. The other kings also wanted to play with Toya. In the evening, Toya created a fireworks and told the knights that nobody is attacking them. So the royal families watched the beautiful fireworks, which was created with bombs. After that, Lu thanked Toya, because she was happy to experience such a nice time with him. Suddenly, Toya gave her an engagement ring, and she was proud to be Toya's fiancé. Then Toya proved he's a true Rizzler, and he knew Lu wanted to held his hands. A few days later, we see Toya's group in a huge cave on the mountains. They were looking for Santa Claus, but they only found a new ruin. Then Toya jumped into a secret trapdoor. He discovered another Babylon ruin, so he transmitted his magic in the teleportation circle. 
Toya was teleported to a room in Babylon, and he found a building. Suddenly, Belflora introduced herself. She told him about the alchemy ward, and Toya was surprised by her big boobs. Toya then related that he was accepted as a master by the other guardians of the Babylon Islands. Flora could sense his Riz aura, and she wanted to test him. So she forced Toya to massaging her breasts. Toya was overwhelmed, and he was recognized as her new master. After the kiss, Toya couldn't believe that he had received another perverted servant. Toya was shocked by the passionate kiss he got from Flora. After that, Toya was shown around the alchemy ward. He then learned that many different medicines are manufactured in the laboratory. Then Flora showed him a room full of potions that invoke special abilities. Followed, Toya learned that Professor Regina made many different sexual enhancers. Later on, Lean was disappointed that they didn't find the Library of Babylon. Then the other girls met Flora, and the girls were jealous of her big breasts. Yahi tried to calm Yumina and Lu, and she cheered them up. After that, Lian said Toya could help the growing of their breasts, if they massaged them. Suddenly Flora confessed that Toya kissed her and massaged her breasts. The girls got angry, and he apologized to them. When he got home, Reen brought him his newly ordered books, and he wanted to learn a new magic. Following this, Toya tried to cast outside of his home the spell fly. He could learn it immediately, so Toya flew into the sky. Toya became Super Toya, and he could fly through the sky at super speed with ease. After using the spell, he felt sick and rested on Elsa's lap. She asked him if he could cast the fly spell on her. Toya replied that it isn't possible to transfer the spell to another person. He said he could carry her in his arms while flying. Suddenly Toya remembered that he can use the levitation spell. As a result, he made Elsa levitate, and they could fly together. Elsa was impressed by Toya. Toya then said that he learned the spells to fight against the phrase demons. Then he flew in the sky and he discovered his friends. So Toya welcomed his new residence to his Brunhilde kingdom. Suddenly God called him, and on the phone the goddess of love wanted to talk with Toya. The goddess of love saw that he was in love mode, so she suggested that he should now spend a lot of time with his fiancé. The goddess of love wished him good luck with his wives. In the afternoon, Toya met Yahi's parents, and they gave Toya their blessing. Then Toya said he was glad not to fight against his father. Suddenly her father got the idea to test Toya's power, but Yahi didn't want them to fight. Yahi's parents could see the passion of their love. As a result, Yahi's parents wished them both to be happy together. Followed then, Toya visited Elsa and Linz's family. The twins' uncle Toya thought he would be punished by the new king. The daughter then apologized that he was talking nonsense. Toya immediately tried to calm him down, and Aunt Lana understood why her niece loved Toya. She understood that he is a very good-hearted boy. Then Toya was asked if he is strong as the king of their nation. Toya was asked if he can defeat strong bears. So he found out about the monster problem, and he wanted to go get rid of it later. After the hunt of the bears, Toya drank tea at his cafe. Suddenly Ende appeared, and Toya asked him about the phrase. Ende told him that the phrase had come from another world looking for a special core. The demons attack humans because the core of their king is hidden in a human. The king of Fraz communicates with sounds, but the beating heart of the humans are too loud. As a result, they kill the innocent people to find the core. Then Toya learned that 5,000 years ago, the barrier was suddenly repaired, and the danger was gone. Toya then asked Ende if he is a good or a bad person. He replied that he is just a guy, who is just trying to get humanity more time by hunting down the phrase demons. Then Ende said goodbye, and he just said that he is a traveler. Toya was concerned about the new information about the phrase. He then questioned Rosetta about the frame gear weapon. Toya wanted to copy the weapon against the frame demon, but Rosetta said it isn't possible. The weapon is very difficult to build, and they don't have enough materials to craft the new machines. As a result, Toya decided to track down the other islands of Babylon in order to get hold of the phrase gear. After that, his pets wanted to support him, and they told Toya about the Red Monarch. Toya learned that the Red Monarch can control thousands of birds. So Kohaku said that the Red Monarch is very nice and a calm monster. However, with the support of Kohaku and his other pet, Toya summoned a new monarch. Then a huge flame bird appeared, with a majesty performance. His pets were happy to see the Red Monarch again. Then Kohaku asked the Red Monarch to make a familiar contract with Toya. Toya was surprised that he didn't want to test him first, so he got a new pet right away. This is how Toya named his new pet, Koyoku. Then Koyoku should use her power, and she ordered the birds to search for the island of Babylon. The birds immediately was flew to the sky, 
and Toya was confident of finding other pieces of Babylon Islands. The following morning, Toya woke up in his bed, and Yumina slept next to him. Suddenly Toya realized that yesterday, he fell asleep alone in his bed. Yumina then woke up and said good morning to him. Toya asked why she slept in his bed. So Yumina replied that they are spouses and it's normal to sleep together. After that, Yumina kissed him on the cheek and she went to prepare breakfast. Followed Toya was resting in his garden with Kohaku. Then Koyoku appeared. She reported to Toya that she found a black pyramid, which looks strange. Toya assumed it belonged to part of Babylon Island. So he gathered all his girls and he told them about the discovered ruin. The girls were very motivated and looking forward to their trip. Toya hoped they would find the hangar or storehouse of Babylon. Then we see Toya's group on a deserted island. Suddenly, a monster appeared and Toya's group was ready for battle. Teddy Bear Paula also wanted to fight. The fight against the huge rhino then started and Toya aimed his pistol at the monster. Yumina fired her pistol first and Lindsay cast an ice spell on the rhino. After that, Lou attacked the monster's legs and she cut off one leg. Then Elsa and Yahi attacked the monster and they won without the help of Toya. He was sad because he was useless. Meanwhile, Teddy Bear Paula found a black pyramid. Toya immediately found a teleporter to one of the islands of Babylon. He then told Kohaku that he will now teleport up to the floating island. And Toya activated the teleport station. Suddenly Toya was attacked by a red-haired girl with a huge tool. Toya shocked that a crazy girl is guarding the island of Babylon. Then Monica introduced herself. After that, Toya told her about the collected floating islands. So she challenged Toya to a fight. Toya was attacked, but he instantly defeated her with his slip spell. Monica slipped and she blushed because Toya had seen her panties. She got angry and tried to attack Toya again. Toya repelled her attack and she was humiliated even more. After that, Monica accepted her defeat and she recognized Toya as her new master. Following this, she immediately kissed him to register Toya as her new master. As a result, Monica showed the huge hangar enchanted with space magic. Monica wanted to open a storage room, but she couldn't reach the button, so she destroyed it. Toya then saw Professor Regina's first frame gear built. Toya immediately wanted to play with the giant combat suit, but he was disappointed because the controls are broken. Monica explained that the machine consumes ether liquid. Then Monica said maybe Flora has a solution. Later, he learned that Flora could manage to produce ether liquid, but she needs ether ore for the production. Then Lindsay showed a magic stone, and Flora confirmed that the magic stone is an ether ore. Toya was happy, but the girls explained to him that a magic stone of the desired size had never been found before. Yahe suggested that Toya could use Google Maps to locate a giant-sized magic stone. Toya immediately brought Flora the giant ether ore, and she was able to create ether liquid. Then Rosetta visited the Babylon hangar. She wanted to see if everything in the hangar was clean. After that, the pilot seat was opened, and Toya tested out the new combat suit. Monica said that a transformer is very dangerous. Toya said that he haven't a driver license and wasn't ready to control a giant robot yet. Suddenly, Rosetta said they have a frame unit to simulate controlling the frame gear. Toya was able to test the control of the frame gear with the frame unit. He was happy and was instantly fan of the frame unit. Another frame gear suddenly appeared in the simulator, which Monica controlled. She challenged Toya to a fight, and they were awarded swords. Toya immediately defeated Monica for being a pro gamer in his old life. He later showed his girls the new frame units. His fiancés and pets then played with the frame units, and Monica also produced additional frame gears with Rosetta. Suddenly Sushi appeared, urgently looking for him. She asked Toya to make her his fiancé as well. Lime then appeared. He explained the situation to him that Sushi had recently received a marriage proposal. Toya then learned that she must marry Prince Zabun of the Kingdom of Linnea. Toya didn't think the idea was bad, but Sushi refused. Suddenly Lime said that the prince forced his girls to hook on OnlyFans. Toya was horrified by the story, and he wanted to help Sushi. Sushi was desperate, and she begged him to make her his fiancé. Toya didn't want to let Sushi down, so he decided to ask his fiancé for advice. As a result, all of his fiancés said that he gets permission to make Sushi as his sixth fiancé. Suddenly, Lime said that announcing Sushi's engagement to Toya would cause a lot of trouble with Prince Zabun. Francesca suggested secretly murdering the prince, because he is a disgusting guy. Then his other servants suggested many brutal ideas to Toya. Toya wanted to find a peaceful solution, and he went to Alfred for advice. Alfred said that their only option is to speak to the second prince of the Linnea kingdom, because he is the only sane one. 
Unfortunately, the second prince was banished for being the son of a concubine. Also, Toya learned that Prime Minister Wardak has the most power, and he only uses the royal family for appearances. An envoy from Linnea then appeared, and Toya was asked to resolve the conflict. Linnea's emissary wanted to know the reasons for Sushi's rejection of the marriage proposal. Alfred said that Sushi refused, because she is already engaged to Toya, and the emissary apologized for his rudeness to the King of Brunhilde. He was happy to meet the legendary hero Toya, and asked about his teleportation spells. Toya then learned that the emissary is the second prince of Linnea, and his name is Cloud Zef Linnea. This is how the second prince introduced himself, and Toya learned that Cloud's mother is trapped in a tower. Toya and Alfred were shocked about the situation. Additionally, Cloud said his father has no power over Prime Minister Wardak. Followed Toya realized the plan, which is why Prince Zaboon proposed to Sushi. Toya was furious, and Alfred said they need to set up a meeting with all of their allies. However, all the kings were gathered in one room, and Toya reported him on the problem of Kingdom Linnea. Suddenly, Toya asked about Prime Minister Wardak's evil deeds. Toya then asked what they think about Cloud. All the kings replied that they would all support Prince Cloud. After that, Toya said that they need a plan, but everyone is counting on Toya and believing that he will find a peaceful solution. Later, Toya and the prince teleported to the kingdom of Linnea. He then followed with Yahe and Else to the royal palace. Prince Zaboon was already expecting his brother, and he looked down on him. He called him scum, and Elsa found the prince disgusting. Suddenly, Kohaku noticed that one of his servants is wearing a slave collar. Then Prince Zaboon learned that Sushi had turned down his marriage proposal. Zaboon didn't want to accept, and he slapped Cloud in the face. He then said that Cloud is useless, and he should just kidnap Sushi to enslave her. Afterwards, Zaboon learned that Sushi had turned him down, because she was engaged to King Toya of the Brunhilde Kingdom. Suddenly Prince Cloud was kicked by his brother. Toya and his friends got angry when Cloud was beat up by Zaboon. When Toya tried to intervene, Zaboon's mother showed up. So Prince Zaboon stopped beating his brother and he walked away. After that, Toya healed his friend Cloud in a dark room. Yahe and Elsa said that Prince Zaboon is scum. Toya then learned that Prince Zaboon was enslaving young girls. So Toya immediately freed Prince Zaboon's slave. Meanwhile, Prince Zaboon was looking for his missing slave. However, Zaboon complained about the disappeared slave but Wardak told him that he should use the necklace to kill the slave girl. After that, Prince Zaboon wanted a new slave. Suddenly, Wardak said that Zaboon will be sent to the kingdom of Palof soon. Toya was shocked by Wardak's statement. In the afternoon, he reported to Cloud that Wardak intends to send a declaration of war to the kingdom of Palof. Cloud understood that the situation is very horrible and he needs to do something. Toya said he will support him, and Cloud thanked him, and he wanted to save his kingdom. At night, Toya planned to free Cloud's mother. So Toya used his phone, and he paralyzed all the guards with just a single spell. Toya was able to save Cloud's mother, and Cloud was confused about what just happened. After that, Cloud's mother was saved, and she was happy to see her son alive. Yahe was also happy, and Toya gave her some tissues. Then they got to know nobleman Koop. He wanted to support Cloud to fight against Wardak. Toya was surprised by his story for being the old prime minister, and he asked for a non-violent solution. Toya and his friends hatched a plan, but the evidence that Prince Zaboon had done terrible deeds has long since been destroyed. Suddenly Toya showed that he has an evil plan. The girls shocked, and they knew that Toya got another evil plan. A knight later reported that Queen Arya escaped from the tower. Toya was invisible and spied on Wardak's conversation. Then Wardak said that they must now catch Cloud and postpone the declaration of war. Wardak later said that he must quickly make Zaboon the next king. Suddenly Toya learned interesting information, and he recorded them with his phone. Toya learned that Cloud's father was being blackmailed, and now he knew why the king couldn't do anything. Also, Wardak said he intends to kill Prince Cloud. After that, he also learned that Zaboon is actually the son of Wardak and Queen Daisha. The following day in the king's hall, Toya and his friends watched the speech on the succession to the throne. The king said that he will soon abdicate as king. Meanwhile, Wardak and his family were looking forward to Zaboon becoming king. Suddenly the king said that Prince Cloud will be the next king of the kingdom of Linnea. So Prince Cloud went about his claim to the throne and Zaboon was shocked. Cloud then said that as the new king, he would swear allegiance to the kingdom. Suddenly Wardak asked why Zaboon wasn't choose as the king. Queen Daisha wanted an answer too. Suddenly the king laughed because he knows about all the lies. Then the king called Toya to show up. 
Toya appeared with his pet tiger Kohaku. He proves the lies of Wardak and Daisha to everyone present, so everyone could see what scum they were. Then Wardak tried to save himself. Then the king said that he knew about the lies. He also knows his wife is safe. As a result, Wardak was stripped of his powers and the king wanted to punish him. After that, Toya asked what punishment Zabun gets. The king replied that he had done bad deeds without intending to murder. He also received the death penalty, and Zabun refused to be executed. Toya said he got a fair punishment. Toya got angry and shot him with rubber bullets. Prince Zabun begged for mercy, but Toya couldn't forgive him. So Zabun was knocked out by Toya with his rubber bullets. After that, Cloud became king, and Wardak's family weren't executed, instead they got a field work as punishment. A few weeks later, King Cloud also became Toya's new ally. Then Toya wanted to play with his frame gears. Suddenly Sushi appeared. She was pleased that Toya had defeated the evil prince. Followed Toya told her that they can cancel their engagement, but Sushi was very sad. She almost started to cry. As a result, Toya decided to marry Sushi too, if he turns 18 years old. Sushi was happy, and Toya got a sixth fiancé now. In the months that follow, we see Toya at Olga and Leon's wedding. They greeted all their guests. Meanwhile, Lindsay and Lou were happy to see their marriage. Toya was then greeted by the fathers of the newly married couple. They were happy about their children's wedding, and thanked Toya, because without him, the two would never have found each other. After the wedding, they were at home, and Yumina said that they need to develop their love further. Lou loved Yumina's proposed idea. Lindsay didn't know what Yumina was up to, so she suggested a date with Toya, and Lou was already looking forward to their date together. Toya was confused and said that they are engaged. Suddenly the other girls said that they hadn't seen much of Toya lately. Toya realizes they were right, because he had a lot of paperwork to do. So he accepted spending time with the girls. In the afternoon, Toya was waiting for his fiancés, and he was surprised by their outfits. Yumina said that the designs are all he had created. Toya then complimented them, and they blushed. After that, the girls acted strangely, and played rock-paper-scissors against each other. Later, Toya went to town with his girls. Suddenly, Lou and Lindsay hugged Toya, and the other girls were jealous. Toya understood their strange behavior from earlier. Later in a jeweler, he bought all his girls' jewelry. At lunch, it was Yumina and Elsa's turn to spend some time with Riz God Toya. So the other girls were jealous, and Toya wasn't allowed to eat by himself. Yumina and Elsa wanted to feed Toya. After lunch, it was Yahei's turn, and Lou was allowed to walk at Toya's side too. Suddenly, Yumina spotted a giant picture. Toya didn't think the theme of action suited a date, but Lindsay knew the story. Elsa stopped her immediately, because she spoiled almost the whole story. Suddenly, bandits appeared, and they tried to threaten them. Their intentions were to steal Toya's bitcoins. Toya's fiancés knew that bitcoin is going to the moon, so they beat them all up. After watching the theater performance, Yumina was angry. The reason is the bandits ruined her mood. So Toya used his charm, and he immediately cheered Yumina up. She was happy, and the other girls blushed at his words too. The girls said that they love Toya, and they want to live on his side forever. Then they ran home together with Toya. Toya was looking forward to their future together. When they got home, Toya realized they forgot Sushi. Followed Sushi was angry, because she couldn't spend time with Toya. As a result, Toya spent the following day with Sushi, and she was happy about her date with Toya. Following this, Toya and Sushi were greeted by the town's children. Later they were in many different shops. Toya invited Sushi for a cheesecake. After that, they watched the samurai on their workout. In the evening, Sushi thanked him for the great day. Toya replied that he also had a lot of fun on their date. Then Sushi said that Toya is a great person because he always makes people very happy. He then thought about the words of Sushi, and he was happy to see the children of his kingdom grow up happily. Then he held Sushi's hand, and he was glad to be engaged with Sushi. Suddenly, Toya received a message from Kohaku and Flora. He learned that his ether liquid is ready. The next day, Toya went to see his robots, and the girls were amazed too. Then the frame gear was controlled, and it finally moved. Yahei was piloting the giant transformers, and he asked her about the feeling. Then Yahei replied that the controls feel like they are in the simulator. Suddenly, Lu asked why he didn't control the robot himself. Toya replied that he is a gentleman. Then he wanted to test the frame gear, but the robot ran away. Lindsay said that Elsa went into the machine. Later Toya also received a new blue sword. Rosetta was amazed that Toya came up with the idea of forging a sword with the phrase crystals. 
Then Toya said he came up with the idea while fighting against them the last time. After that, Toya learned that she needs more Aura Halcom for building the frame gears. So Toya decided to find Aura Halcom, but Lu and Yumina went looking for him. They wanted to go on a date with Toya again, but they didn't want to stop him from working. Toya told them that he is looking for Aura Halcom. Suddenly Toya thought of looking for Aura Halcom golems. He used Google Maps and immediately found the golems he was looking for. The girls wanted to go with him, but they didn't like to fly on the sky. As a result, Toya flew alone to the kingdom of Lestia to hunt the golems. On his way, Toya discovered a burning village that was being attacked by Frey's demons. Toya rushed to the rescue and a group of knights fought the Frey's demons. A female knight tried to defeat them, but her sword broke. Toya managed to save her in time. He immediately defeated a Frey's demon, and the girl fell in love with Toya. Then Toya realized that only weak Frey's demons are won the field. He told the knights that he will defeat them all. Following this, Toya launched his attack against the Frey's demons, destroying them all in just a moment. After the fight, Toya asked about injured people. He learned that everyone is only slightly injured, and he offered to heal them. However, Toya healed all the injured villagers. Followed then, Toya introduced himself, and he got to know the Princess Hildegard of the Kingdom of Lestia. After that, Toya said that he is the king of Brunhilde. Hildegard was surprised, and she heard rumors about the legendary hero Toya. Suddenly Toya asked if he could collect the phrase's materials. That's how Hildegard found out about his phrase sword, and she stared at his sword. Toya noted that she also wants a phrase sword. As a result, he pulled his spare swords out of his item box. So Toya gave Hildegard a sword. Hildegard then blushed and thanked Toya. After that, Toya said goodbye to Hildegard. Later, Toya defeated many Aura Halcom golems, and he collected enough materials. On the way back he saw a deer, who wanted to show him something. The deer led him to an injured girl, who was bleeding and lost some limbs. She was very bad injured, and was about to die. Then Toya immediately used his strongest healing spell to save her in time. The girl woke up briefly, but she immediately fainted. Sometime later, Flora told that the rescued girl was healed, but she lost her memories. Toya was shocked, and learned that she still can read. Toya suspected side effects caused by the severed body parts. Flora was confident in her lab, and said she could cut off Toya's mushrooms to prove to him that the side effects weren't caused by her alchemy lab. After that, Toya visited the girl in the hospital room. He noticed that she really had no memories. Then he introduced himself as King of the Kingdom of Brunhilde. The girl didn't remember her own name, and she suggested that Toya should give her a name. So Toya decided to name the girl Sakura. She liked the chosen name Sakura, and said thanks to Toya. In the afternoon, Toya told Elsa and Lu what had happened. Also, Toya said that she is currently going for a walk, and Koyoku took care of her. Then Elsa wanted to train with the knights, and Lu continued to practice cooking. After that, he went to look for Sakura, and he heard a beautiful song. Sakura sang a harmonic song, and she was so focused on singing that she didn't notice Toya. Then Toya complimented her voice and asked if she liked to sing. Sakura was unsure if she would like to sing, because she sang subconsciously. As a result, Toya had a great idea and started playing a piano. Toya could play the piano, because he was forced to learn to play the piano in his childhood. Suddenly Sakura appeared, and she liked the sound of the piano. After that he showed her different pieces of music, and she got in the mood to sing to his piano playing. Toya was a great musical duo with Sakura, and Sakura sang better than Hannah Montana. The two created beautiful music together, and the other girls appeared too. They applauded and said that they love voice of Sakura. Then they asked if Sakura could sing more songs. In the days that followed, Toya found out about a monster. Prim showed him a book about the strong monster called Catalipas. This is how Toya learned that the monster is very dangerous, and it has the demon eye with Medusa's abilities. Prim said that people who look the monster in the eyes are petrified and can't move. So Toya was asked for help, and he learned that Toya was the only one who could do it. He learned that the king of the kingdom of Lestia would also be suitable. Unfortunately, Princess Hildegard's grandfather is already over 70 years old. Then Toya decided to accept the quest against the monster, and asked for the reward. Prim showed him a large amount reward, and he was confident of defeating the monsters with the demon eyes. However, he reported his girls the accepted quest. They thought Toya was a gold digger, who only wanted to fight strong monsters for money. Leon told the others that Catalepas are very rare monsters because they even petrify each other. Lu and Yahe found it pitiful, because they can't even look their lovers in the eye. Then Toya said he will be back in the evening, 
but the girls wanted to join him on his monster hunt. They were looking forward to a new adventure with Toya. Later they prepared for monster hunting, and Yahe received a phrase sword. Toya said she can do more damage with the new sword. Yahe thanked Toya, but the others were jealous of not getting a gift. Francesca then informed Toya that they had reached their destination. Toya's group sought out the Catolepas monster. Else then asked why he didn't revive the petrified adventurers first. Suddenly, Toya found the monster he was looking for, and he said that the wedding rings have an anti-spell against Medusa's gaze. Then Toya started attacking, and the monster tried to petrify him with his demon eye. Toya's group immediately launched all their attacks against the monster. The Catolepas was able to withstand the attacks from Toya's group. Lindsay then was almost crushed, and she said she is unharmed because Toya saved her in time. Toya then retrieved his superpower sword from his storage spell. The monster activated his demon eye and attacked him, but Toya managed to cut down his head. Suddenly Yumina said that he will be petrified, and he used a spell in time to save himself. After the fight, Lu screamed and she became petrified, but Lindsay calmed her down. They said that a Catolopus can petrify people for a short time after his death. The petrification then stopped, and Lu broke off the rock. Suddenly, Lu realized that her panties were petrified as well. Toya was forced to look away, and as he realized what was happening in front of him, Toya started to blush. Then Toya wanted to look, but the girls shout on him. After that, another Catolepas appeared and he petrified Toya. Toya managed to free himself in time again and he warned his fiancés. Toya tried not to look into the Catolepas demon eyes. Then Toya had an idea because he learned a spell against Medusa's eyes. As a result, Toya censored the eyes of the Catolepas and they were able to defeat both of them. After that they went to the guild and Prim thanked Toya for the great help. He then dissolved the petrification of the adventurers. Toya forgot that they destroyed they all are naked, and the girls were shocked. A few days later, Toya allowed the other kings to play with his frame units. They had a lot of fun, and Cloud was impressed. After the first round, Toya asked for her opinion on the game. Meanwhile, Princess Hildegard was sad, and looked at the phrase sword, which they got from Toya. Suddenly her grandpa appeared, and he noticed her sad sighs. Subsequently, he learned about the weapons made by Toya, and became curious about him. In the days that followed, Toya came up with a design to upgrade his robot. So Monica immediately started to install the upgrades on the robots. Suddenly, Kohaku said that someone want to see him. Toya found out that the goddess of love was coming to visit him. The goddess of love introduced herself to everyone as Toya's big sister, Kara. His fiancés were surprised that Toya had a big sister. However, the girls wanted Toya to enjoy his reunion with his sister. After that, Toya found out that she was bored in the god realm and she wanted to have some fun. So she decided to live with Toya for a while. Suddenly Toya got a message that an ambassador from Kingdom of Lestia would like to visit him. Kara told Toya that he can now seduce Princess Hildegard too. Lapis said that the ambassador is currently watching the knights on their training. Meanwhile, Goddess Kara had a premonition that she didn't want to reveal to Toya. Thereafter, Toya met Princess Hildegard on the training field. She said, she came along as an escort. Then Gale, the previous king of Lestia, appeared. He was happy to meet Toya. He then said that he would like to see his city. Suddenly he grabbed Maid Lapis's booty. Hildegard was ashamed of her grandfather's behavior. Toya was surprised because the old man was a mutant Roshi in an isekai world. Then Gale said that he would like to see the transformers of Toya's kingdom. Toya then showed off his frame gears, which are used against the phrase demons. Toya told him that the robots are his secret weapons to save the world. Then he ordered Monica to demonstrate the fighting power of his robots. As a result, Monica destroyed a huge rock with ease. After that, Gale wanted to know the reasons of building the frame gears. He replied that he wants to protect the world because the phrase demon destroyed an entire nation a few centuries ago. In addition, Toya assured that he has no plans to attack other countries with the phrase gears. After that, Gale wanted to know what would happen if they teamed up. Toya managed convinced Gale and he allied himself with Toya's kingdom. Following this, Hildegard interrupted their conversation because she planned to challenge Brunhilde's strongest warrior to a fight. Later, Yahe fought against Princess Hildegard. Yahe showed off her strong sword skills, and the two were evenly matched. In the end, both tried to win, but neither managed to get the win. Following Toya ended the fight between the two. Hildegard also learned that Toya is engaged to Yahe. In addition, Hildegard learned that Toya is a boy with infinite riz. When Yahe told her that Toya already had six fiancés, she was in despair. 
Suddenly the goddess of love appeared. She knew that Hildegard had a crush on Toya. Toya didn't notice her feelings and Hildegard was nervous. Then Hildegard tried to clear up the misunderstanding. Suddenly, Yahe said that she was just Toya's side chick in the beginning too. But Yahe could understand Hildegard's feelings and said that the other girls would also support her. As a result, Yahe said that Hildegard should also become Toya's fiancé. Toya was shocked to get a seventh fiancé, and Kara was happy about their decision. After that, Gale showed up, saying he wouldn't accept the marriage without a fight. Toya thought he had to fight against Gale, but he wanted to see Hildegard's determination. In the afternoon, Hildegard became Toya's seventh fiancé, and everyone congratulates her. Then Sushi said that she is a kind princess, and they were sure that Hildegard would be a great support for Toya. Suddenly Kara showed up. She wanted to know the reason why she fell in love with Toya. Everyone was excited about the story too. So Hildegard told about the story, that Toya saved him from Frey's demons. Kara stopped her story. She expected to hear more romance and girly things. As a result, Hildegard describes Toya's appearance as a shining hero. They all agreed that Toya's appearance is like a shiny Pokemon in human form. Followed she blushed, and everyone was happy about her story, that she fell in love with Toya at first sight. Followed she told the girls, that after the day, she just could think about Toya. The girls answered that they understand her feelings, because Toya is a Rizzler, who can make every girl happy. Suddenly Kara wished Hildegard good luck for her fight, because she is looking forward that the both will marry soon. Then the girl said, that somehow she will conquer her grandfather, and love will give her strength. In the evening the fight between Hildegard and her grandfather began. Gail was very strong despite being old. The girls were worried about Hildegard, but they firmly believed that she will win. Toya wanted to help Hildegard, and he used his phone to show him pictures of OnlyFans hotties. Following this, Gail was successfully distracted, so Hildegard managed to defeat her grandpa successfully with a final attack. Suddenly, Yumina asked where he got the picture of the woman in bikini. Hildegard was able to save Toya's life because the girls were all angry with him, and Toya healed Gail's injury. Then Gail congratulated Hildegard on the official engagement to Toya. He also wanted to get to know the woman in the bikini. Following this, Toya used the opportunity to disappear with Gail. Meanwhile, his fiancés wanted to punish Toya for owning bikini photos of other women. The next morning, Hildegard thanked the other girls for their support. Then Hildegard asked about Toya's parents. Elsie and Lindsay answered that they didn't know Toya's parents themselves. Suddenly, Kara said that Toya's family history is very difficult to explain. She said that Toya will definitely explain everything to them at some point. Then Kara wanted to tell the girls secrets of Toya. Kohaku immediately wanted to warn Toya, but Kara prevented Kohaku's telepathic powers. As a result, Kohaku couldn't save her beloved master. Then Kara told the girls many secrets of Toya. Suddenly Toya felt a strange feeling that worried him. After a few weeks, Koyoku reported that she found a ruin near the kingdom of Lestia. Suddenly his fiancés appeared in school uniforms. Yumina said they bought school uniforms, which his first love, Choko, always wore. Then he also saw Lin and Sakura in school uniforms. Toya was shocked that Kara told the girls Toya's secrets. After that, Lindsay wanted to know if Toya liked the outfits, so he said they all looked cute and they were happy. Later, Toya found a portal, and he was surprised to discover a tower. He then learned from Preliora that he had found the Rampart and the Tower of Babylon. He also learned about the history of two parts of Babylon, uniting over 370 years ago. Following this, Preliora immediately accepted him as her new master but he was surprised that he did not have to fulfill a condition as usual. Later, Preliora showed another terminal administering, who was sleeping. Preliora didn't manage to wake Noel up, so Toya gave her tasty meat to see Noel's reaction. Preliora then allowed Noel to eat the delicious meat. She woke up and thanked for the delicious meal. After that, Toya introduced himself. Followed, she told him some conditions for being her master. Toya accepted her conditions, and he became Noel's new master. In addition, she registered Toya with a passionate kiss. However, Toya gave her delicious food. Suddenly, Toya was kissed by Preliora as well. After that, the ownership of the both island were transferred to him. In the afternoon, Noel tried to tell him more about the tower, but she fell asleep immediately. Then Toya learned that the tower can transform air into magical energy. And the rampart is the defense system of Babylon. Preliora then met Toya's fiancés. Preliora noticed one was missing, and Yahe said that Sushi is in Belfast. Suddenly, his favorite pet Kohaku reported that he received an important letter, 
So Kohaku brought him a letter, and he learned that Yumina's sibling is about to be born. The king was happy about his newborn son. He showed the newborn baby to Toya, and he wanted that Toya choose a name. Toya suggested the name Yamato, and the king loved the name chosen by Toya. Suddenly Prince Yamato started crying, so the girls said that the king should bring baby Yamato to his mom. After the birth, all the girls relaxed with a bath. They were happy to relax at the Silver Moon Spa. Then the girls were already looking forward to the celebration, because Yumina got a little brother, who will become the next king of Belfast. Suddenly, Linza mentioned that they will all eventually have children with Toya as well. All of his fiancés were nervous thinking about making a baby with Toya. After the bath, Monica reported to Toya about his fiancé's conversation, and he blushed. Rosetta then said that the professor had seen many cute babies in his future life. Toya learned that he had made a baby with each of his nine wives. Toya shocked to learn he will get two more wives. Then Francesca said that apart from Lean, none of them knew about the future. Toya wanted to keep everything a secret, but the girls showed up. They wanted an explanation from Toya, but he didn't know what to say. Yumina asked Preliora, and she immediately wanted to snitch on Toya. Toya tried to stop Preliora from explaining the secret about the nine fiancés, but he failed. So the girls found out that Toya will marry more girls. The girls were shocked that Toya is a playboy. Toya apologized for owning too much Riz. After that, the girls discussed about a punishment for Toya. Lean and Sakura said he will definitely get a punishment. Suddenly the girls said, they are not mad that he get two more wives, but they were angry at Toya for keeping secrets from them. Toya was found guilty, and his punishment is that he need to prove his love to every of his fiancés. Toya knew he must now prove his true love to all the girls. Then Toya had an idea, and he wanted to prove his love to the girls at the fireworks at night. Following this, the girls watched a beautiful firework with Toya together. His servants support Toya. In addition, all residents and his friends celebrated the festival with delicious food. Toya said he is happy, because the birth of Prince Yamato has made him understand the importance of family. Toya said that he is happy for having all his wives, and he will protect everyone from the Freza demons and evil monsters. Following this, Yumina kissed him. Elsie appeared next, and kissed him too. According to Elsa, Sushi wanted to kiss Toya, but she was still too young, so she only got a kiss on her cheek. After that, Lou appeared, but she was nervous, and immediately ran away. Lian said that Hildegard passed out at the thought of a kiss. Next, Yahe wanted to kiss with Toya. She was happy, but suddenly she threw Toya on the ground. After that, Toya accidentally kissed Elsa. She was happy, but punched Toya unintentionally. Toya woke up again. All his girls were waiting for Toya. They wanted to watch the final of the firework with Toya together. Toya was happy and looking forward to his other two unknown fiancés in his future. Afterwards, Francesca said that she found the psychic stone. All his servants looked into the future of Toya, so they found out that Lean and Sakura will become Toya's wife too.